All right. It's Friday. My name is Ben Karpinski. I'm here on behalf of Gareth Cliff for the Gareth Cliff Morning Show. I've got the team of St. Pee over here across from me. Good morning, Ben. Yeah. For a second, I thought you were going to say anything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm keeping you on your toes. Uh, I, I've had a great, I've had a great morning so far. Ryan's given me a crash course on how to run the show. Yes, I mean it's not hard. I was showing him back in the day. I used to run the show from this mothership thingy over here. Yeah, and now you use a roadcaster. No, it's like a flashy lights. There's all kinds of things. And, you know, Ryan does things in a very gentle, understanding <laughs> tone. You know, no felt, no time did I feel like I was silly. <laughs> Just told me I must ride the fader. Are you doing a good job? Is it? You know, you'd be like a DJ. Ticka, ticka, ticka. It's quite something here. There's like a countdown clock and yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's not talk the nonsense because we it is Friday. And of course, it's Rugby World Cup final Friday. Let's go. Go, Bucker. So not only do you only get to say that every four years, but you only get to say that every four years if your team is good. So I think like that's a really special occasion, right? Yes, yes. It's yes. like when you get those strange astrologer people going, if you look outside your window now, you will see something, something comet, which is the only time in 70, whatever. This yeah. is real. We get to live this right I now. I know. Right? In a couple of hours, we're going to find out if we remain champions or if... Um... If it's four more years of being world champs. Like, that's the thing. Like We're currently the world champions. Yes. So we're going back to back. And that is a huge occasion, so much so that some people is wearing green today. Yes, I am. I tried. You know me and sports, we're not friends, but I'm trying. Oh, you've, you've <laughs> it. We've got a very special guest coming on at 7, who is probably, I think, the coolest guy we could bring in today to, to talk rugby, have Friday here. I have to admit, I have a crush on him. At bonus. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't know that. It's not in the show notes here. No, no like crush. I follow his content and I'm just like, oh my gosh. Yeah, he's so. a good guy. We've got uh, Kukle Kuks Sonkozi coming in. He's yes. a good friend of mine. And then, of course, we've got Borge, George coming in later. Yes. So it's, it's an action pack Friday. And of course, you are here with us too. And uh, yeah, you can obviously do things in the comments like Sean, who says, good morning. Have a good Friday. Nothing cryptic about that. Sean's just wanting to be part of it. Amazing. <laughs> Um, I, I do want to start the show off with, with just a, a thank you. Okay. And it has to be a thank you to the Springboks. Oh. Look at our lives in the last, <laughs> let's just call it eight weeks. We've had purpose in the weekends, right? We've got things oh, yes. to get excited about. Oh, yes. Like whether you're unpopular, whether you're popular, whether you're old, you're young, you've got like a real purpose to get excited about weekends right now. Oh, yes. And weekends have not been the same. Like the drinking has gone up another level. Um, the sense of community has gone up another level. Yes. The fact that we have all come together to just support a team that um, I think has done well in the past. But like as a country, we're just going through the most. So we've yeah. forgotten about load shedding. We've forgotten about petrol's super expensive. We've forgotten about racism, if that's a thing even anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, not if you're the English rugby team because they're trying uh, to they're trying to find some right now, but they haven't done very well with that. But that's a different story, and that's not for today. Yeah, because that was this was the other day's story. Yeah, it's just like <laughs> the box are the greatest thing in South Africa. We think how it brings the people together. I'm not going to go through those cliches with the harp in the background, but it's given us so much like excitement, and no doubt, as you say, all the drinking, the community coming together, yes. extra pumping on the weekends. Yes, I'm thoroughly expecting. That there'll be like, I don't know, 10, 15 years time, I'll meet some young man called Irbin. Yeah. Or a young gent called Sia. Yep. Or Bongi. And I'll be like, your parents did the right thing. If you are literally conceiving right now and you're not <laughs> naming someone from that box squad in your family, you are failing right now. Jesse, it's a nice unisex name. Yeah. Ox. You know, Quacha. Yeah. I, lo I love his slogan, uh, salads don't win scrums. Like... I'm having cake today. <laughs> Damn right I'm having cake today. So, yeah, we're all happy. We're all excited. I think this is kind of like that uh, 2010 World Cup feeling again, where it was like, oh, the World Cup is in South Africa. Oh. Yeah. And also proves something that I've been fighting with, with Gareth for so long, is that sport is the best thing. It is. I guess. I mean, it the hype about cricket is not as intense. Don't try but, to water my argument down now with cricket. But, but we have been doing well. Yeah, but it's it's the coming together thing, right? So, yes. so okay. So, so what are you doing this weekend for the rugby? Have you made plans? Yeah. Well, my all my female friends and I are linking up to watch the rugby. That's a first in see history. <laughs> we're like, yes, girls, we're gonna link up. 
watch the rugby, have a few cocktails, and boom, shaka boom, have a great Saturday. So that's all I plan to do. Nice. I, I even plan on getting um, a Springboks t-shirt. I'll try to find it yeah. somewhere. I know it's last minute. No, I'm good. that child. But I'm so invested that I'm willing to spend my own hard-earned money now. That's it, because you're invested in this process, just like the boxer invested in us and our <laughs> happiness. And that's yes. what it comes down to. So um, I'm going to my, my golf club because they put on amazing sort of sporting things. Mm -hmm. like this major yes at Royal Johannesburg this whole weekend. It's their festival weekend. And then we get to go do that Saturday night. So I'm playing golf in the morning. Ooh. I'm going to come home for a slight breather, maybe a power nap. Ugh. And then going back there for the whole game. Oh, it's, it's just so exciting. So yeah. if you have any incredible plans, and this is something also to boast about, then drop us a, a comment. Um, tell us what, you, what you're doing for the Springbok final. Because it is. It's like, it's the final. And yes. it's in a decent time zone. Like uh, the next World Cup where is it? Australia. Mm -hmm. The time zone's and not as adding... lekker as What day. are your thoughts on that, by the way? They've adding added... more teams. Yes. Um, some people, I think it's terrible. I'm all for growing the game. Okay. But I'm totally against diluting it. Oh, okay. See, people never have the the balanced discussion, right? Mm -hmm. Because everybody wants the it's like this whole thing with color blindness at the start of the Rugby World Cup. Yes. Well, we know colorblind fans have been ostracized. Like bullshit. What has that happened in the finals? <laughs> no. You see none of this Jersey malarkey <laughs> come in after the courses. <laughs> and um so this whole thing about growing like we've seen the FIFA World Cup do it. And I, there's more of a point there because it's a much more global sport. It's mm -hmm. huge. Everyone plays football. Not everyone plays rugby. Yeah, get to a stage, sure, but you've got to create more sort of like feeder tournaments, so to speak. I will well, rugby are trying that, and I will give mm -hmm. them the credit for that. But we've got to stop thinking that rugby has to be this global game. Why must everything be Walmart? Why must everything be the big, hairy, everything to everybody thing? You know, people get so obsessed with inclusivity to the point that we actually lose our identity. I really do. I mean, this is obviously, I don't want to tangent here. <laughs> Known to do this. I, I didn't understand what the big huff and puff was when they did do that. And I was like, I'm going to ask the only person that I know that can give me a solid answer, which is Ben. So, yeah. Look, it all comes down to spreadsheets ultimately, right? Mm -hmm. You want to expand the game because more teams play, more money can come into the coffers. Okay. So what these people always do is that they're always going, oh, we've got to grow audience, build audience. No, you've got to build quality of audience. Because mm -hmm. it's always better to have a thousand loyal, interesting, higher LSM people who are back in the sport mm -hmm. than a million people who are like, yeah, whatever. I'm going to go watch that instead. Or, hey, the Barbie movie's out. That's not a rugby fan. That's yes. no, just a person with money. <laughs> so, yeah, this is again, I don't want to get economics or marketing straight up, but that's it. Yeah, Gavin Ustavek. I went to school with Gavin. He was a little bit older than me in school. Oh. Um, Yada Ben, that's the most boot rugby jersey, spring rock rugby jersey I've seen. Um, yeah, slight story <laughs> behind this. Yes. It's it's like it's such an old Springbok jersey. There's like not even a logo. It wasn't even made by anything. It was just, this was I'm guessing pre eighties. Mm -hmm. It was at my parents' house. They had no idea how they got it. It was a bit tattered and the sleeves were ripped. Oh my gosh. So I had to rip off the sleeves. So that's why it is like in a it's more of a boot cut. But it's beautiful. It fits like a glove. It's like soft it's cotton. It's dope. But it shows how but, long you've been you look, know, look at that badge. Fan. Look at that badge. Oh, love it. It's like a proper bulky. I mean, it's probably got bulky on it. It's like a proper bulky and a proper old leather ball. Yeah. So love that's, it. that's my Bok jersey homage for this weekend. All right. So, yeah, show as usual, you know. Mm -hmm. I know Gareth's not here and people are really upset about that. He is cruising right now. Mm -hmm. Actually, he's, he's on a boat. I'm not just saying he's cruising in life, hasn't he's taking it easy. He's physically on a boat and he's doing things that, you know, Gareth. Gareth has to have timeouts, and he's great, currently having a timeout. If you follow him on Instagram, obviously you can see more of that. Yes. Um, he like, likes to post about the history and the places where he goes. Always interesting follow is Gareth Cliff, if you haven't followed him already. Mm. <laughs> so that's where he is. So that's what uh, that's why I'm here. Um, so people, I need to get into a couple of talking points that have been boiling my blood I'm, this week. Yes. And I'm going to start with this one. Which one? <laughs> so... You know, like we all we all very free choice, right? Mm -hmm. And we've often had these conversations in the show, like you must be an adult and you must take responsibility for your choices. Yes. But at the same time, we also know that Zuckerberg and Meta and those people, they're quite dodgy. They've been perverting the minds of the young for quite some time. So I feel like we I've got these two principles slash analogies meeting head on. Okay. Because this week, 
all these lawsuits popped up around Meta and how they literally are screwing up the lives of kids. They're misleading them. They basically perverting their minds. I mean, mm-hmm. obviously lawyer talk after yes. that. Well, what do you make of this? I mean, and also now. It's about is... time. Get ah. listen to them. I think it's it's where would you? Because <laughs> what like with these allegations, I always look at this and go, like timing is quite an interesting thing here. Mm-hmm. So is it a people being building this case up? Or is it one of those things like, well, I think it's like the next thing for us to get behind? Well, from my standpoint, um, I think they've not done a good job in regulating certain content. And I think that's the bigger thing, right? It's that they need to regulate the content and they're not doing a good job. Like you go on Instagram, you'll see bums, but you also see things that you just didn't want to see in life, that you didn't know that this is happening somewhere else and because they're constantly changing it and making it so addictive you know um, the algorithm is constantly uh, changing so that you stay on the app longer it's sorry can we just point out that it's basically instagram no one's suing facebook (laughs) does anyone go on facebook anymore i don't know i i don't use facebook you know what like by stats it's still the biggest social media platform in the world yeah i just feel like it's for our grannies now it's that older generation who no one talks to anymore yeah and they're like, oh my gosh, someone's yeah. birthday. And so yes, okay, Meta, Meta is basically visual crack. Carry on. Yes. Sorry. And so the algor- algorithm is is showing you content that they A, know that you'll want to see and B, that you'll stay longer. So it's not by mistake that before you could only spend five minutes on Instagram or any other social media platform and then be like, ah, oh, I'm good, I'm done. Okay, so they I'm, I'm sorry, feeding I'm- you content that you want to see. Therefore, that is dangerous. I'm just going to chime in here on that on that point. Okay, so this is this is this is my life during the, during the week. I do work on social media. I mm-hmm. have clients on social media. Yes. I make content to these things. I have sure. to access this, and sometimes I go, okay, I'll sh- I'll show you the process, right? And I, <laughs> I'm going to break this down to you because this is this is my life. Mm-hmm. I go onto my phone, okay, I tap yes. the Instagram thing, and um, I go to the search. Now mm-hmm. I'm sure this I'm not I'm sure I'm not the only person who has this problem. I tap on the search thingy. Okay. Okay. And an entire world of distractions is in my face. Okay, yes. for, for me, it's MMA stories. It's Porsche 911s. Because of who I am, Instagram will feed me women in very little clothing. So my mind, I'm going, okay, I need to just get this picture because I need to get the wording of something or I need to see if this has been posted yet because I need to follow up on this. Yes. And then I just see all of this and I go, what's that about? What's that about? 10 minutes, I'm going, shit, I was meant to do the work, put my phone down. It's like, no, you were doing... F- that's why you picked your phone up. <laughs> but you see, they're calculating in that regard. So that's why I go back to my stance of, I think this low seat is way overdue because they know what they're doing. They're feeding you crack and we all like just taking it um, as the guinea pigs as we are. And we're just like all consuming all this content and thinking, oh my gosh, like I'm so productive. No, you're not. You're yeah. on social media for a good, what, three, four hours a day. Some people are longer. I And I'm just like you, Ben. I'll also be on to do work and yeah. be like, oh, let me see what's actually trending. What are people talking about? And before you know it, it's been two hours just like. Yeah, it grabs you. Yes. So I, I agree with you all of this. But then I'm, <laughs> then I'm also saying, yeah, but just be better. Be an adult, okay? It's like I can go into a bottle store right now and I can buy eight bottles of whiskey. I can go do that. But that's not healthy. I know it's not. I can go into internet right now as a guy and watch porn for eight hours. Also not healthy. I can go into a supermarket and buy 20 candy bars, chocolates, sweets. The but whole there's deal. a difference between you walking into the store and someone coming here every day and delivering eight bottles of whiskey. I know, and but essentially, I'm still accessing that thing. It's, but essentially, that's what social media is doing. Well, yeah, like that, that, docu- that documentary movie thing, The Social Dilemma. Yes. And they really break it down of how they're trying to grab you and they're trying to get yes. you out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's what I'm saying is that it's not you. You think in your mind, in your head, you're the one going to the bottle store. No, no, no. The bottle store is coming to you every day, every single day. And Uh, they're serving you different drinks. They're like, oh, today you don't want whiskey? Well, don't worry. We got gin. Oh, you don't want gin? Oh, don't worry. We got some tequila. And it keeps getting better and better. Like, you can't say no. And our primitive minds haven't been evolved quick enough to actually really come to terms with this. Yes. Okay. So the next question, this is also what kind of got me. <laughs> okay. So why is everyone suing Meta and not suing TikTok? Because TikTok has taken this algorithm and they've taken this and they've gone, ha ha, look at these people in the West and now they've ruined their lives. Has there been similar lawsuits for them? Um, I'm not sure, but I think Meta, is, 
because it's been around longer. So it's easier to go for the guy that's been here the longest because essentially you've started this. You're the one who's opened this um, can of worms and you have to also be the one that regulates um, a whole lot of other things that happen on the social media platforms. Because if you do it, everybody else follows. And I think that's what they're thinking. Okay. Well, I mean, because TikTok is still a small fish in the bigger scheme of things. Like, yes, it has like tons of millions and billions of like users on there, but Meta is still the biggest. So you have to mm. target the big guy yeah, yeah, for everybody else to follow suit. But then it will set a precedent as to how you then enforce this and how you prosecute. So, in many ways, TikTok could be sweating about this right now. Yep, they are. They definitely are. You go for the big guy who's basically giving you the blueprint to how your company works. And if that changes, I just, go sh- go, 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 go for everybody else. I just find this fascinating because if you were to look at it just on like, how do you prove this has made people's lives up? Millions, billions will come forward on a script going, I have no attention span anymore. I have no ability to talk to actual people. Um, I, yeah, it's, it's, well, I, I, I'm fascinated to see how this thing is going to go out. I really do. <laughs> yeah. But that's my two cents, and uh, yeah. Okay, some people, there are calls to ask if you are actually naked this morning. Um, it's, quite <laughs> I, a, it's, it's, it's quite a tight angle on you, and it's quite a tight crop. Yeah, um, I do have a dress on. It's kind of like an off-shoulder dress. <laughs> well, Carl, you, she did mention that the, today's guest she has a crush on, so she's throwing big vibe early. Here. I mean, I'm trying to look as good as possible. I'm trying yeah. to show off my best side. <laughs> Do you hear about this this pilot, this guy who was on mushrooms this week? Wait, what? They allowed someone, wait, what? So when you're a pilot, you get to fly the jump seat from time to time. So okay. if you work for a certain company and you mm-hmm. need to get to another place to go to work or okay. you just need to go somewhere, you can sit in those jump seats, which mm-hmm. means you sit in the front of the plane and everyone's nice to you. And this one dude who clearly not so lucky in the head, he apparently was taking mushrooms because he was trying to deal with depression or anxiety. Something on something's on the go with this dude. Oh. He then tried to basically crash the plane. Because he obviously he knows how planes work, right? So then he's basically Was he the only one on that plane? No, obviously not. He's in the jump seat. So the pilots, the real pilots are, are being the pilots. So this dude jumped up and he um there's various ways you can cut like the fuel to the engines and those kind of things, right? So this guy went and tried to sabotage the plane by doing that. Luckily, the pilots were not asleep uh, or in the toilet, and they basically remedied the situation. But this dude physically tried to crash a plane. I think there was about 80 people on it. And then he got restrained, and then he tried to open the emergency um, exit. You know, I'm all for people. If you want to take your own life, go ahead. In your own time. Do you want to rock your boat? But the minute it involves me and you haven't gotten my consent, please, like, what are we doing? Like, why? 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 No. So, he, I think he's being charged with attempted murder for all those people, which makes a lot of sense. We've gone from one big lawsuit to a slightly smaller one here. <laughs> people are getting messed up. But it's interesting, in the comments here, George says that often airline pilots have depression issues. So, this guy's clearly not so lucky in the head. And I yeah, think but he I'm saying, it. Do, do it. In your own time. Don't involve me. I still want to live my best life. Does this mean he's like a needy depressant? Because if you're a, if you're like a reclusive depressant, you'll probably do it on your own time. Good. Because there was a story again. Uh, I forget how many years ago this was now. Maybe five, six years ago. A pilot basically took everyone up and a suicidal pilot at that. Horrible two words here. And what he did was he just lowered the altitude like tiny increments so nobody recognized that the plane was going down until it basically crashed into the Alps. This was like five, six years ago. It's a big story. We t- talked about this. So this is actually one of the scariest stories of the news because you have absolute faith when you get into a plane. You really, like, yes, blind faith even. Like if you get into a budget right now. And I the, don't trust that thing. And the bolt driver. But you can, if if he does something, you can grab the wheel or... You can maybe remedy it slightly. Can still fight for my life. When you're in a plane, that's it's it. Dead. You sit down. You sit. You. At the and the odds will of, of survival are so slim. Like that's also another thing that when you do crash and you surviving, my boy, it's very very slim. So yeah, I've never heard of the term fender bender in airline um, crashes. It's a crash. You die. So, I mean, I, I would imagine that airlines airline companies have like plans in place to find out how these oaks are doing i hope so i 
But what happens as like the family of one of the passengers that was on that plane? Do, do they get to sue? Because I mean, it's not like I wanted to die. And it's not like it was an accident. This was deliberate. Yeah, I didn't realize the show was going to be about suing, but I, <laughs> these are all these are all good reasons to sue. <laughs> I'm just asking, like you knew very well that I was going to take this airplane, or you know, to go see a friend, and I had no intentions whatsoever to die. And there it is. I'm gone. Boom, shakaboo. Yeah, that wasn't in the terms of conditions. You may die. Like, the, the, I don't think anyone's brazen enough to actually basically put that in T's and C's. But it is kind of a scary thought. And I, again, if you're traveling this weekend, sorry, I don't mean to bring this up. This is like <laughs> talking about shark attacks when you're going for a little swim. <laughs> but it's it's a really kind of worrying thing. Like I want to, I mean, like what do you, do, do, do pilots need pep talks before they go out there? I don't know. Do so they need to be incentivized for stuff on the other side? I have no idea, but I think we just need a new system in life. Okay, well, Tracy's got a long question here, which Ryan's brought up. I'm sure it's good. Um, there was also a case of air crash investigation of a pilot who thought it would be a good idea to let his eight-year-old take control of the plane what? for a few minutes. Plane crashed. So, but, but then again, like there's planes and there's planes, right? They're the ones that you have to physically fly the whole time. And again, this is, George can bring this up to speed in this. Um, and then the ones that do have quite a decent autopilot system. But the guy put the eight-year-old behind. Where was this, Tracy? I, <laughs> yeah. I know a while ago there was like this investigation. I think it was Virgin Atlantic pilots. And it turned out that a lot of them were like four or five drinks in when they were flying, like long haul. Because they just said, these guys get bored. I mean, you go. You see that I understand. That I'm like, okay, you've gone. Because the job also gets repetitive, right? Yeah. It's not as if you're doing anything different all the time. It's kind of like, droop, droop. great. Um, so I, I understand. I'm not saying it's right, but I understand if they're like, oh, we've had one or two drinks, oh, partied, did this. It's like those stories don't shock me because at the end of the day, you still kind of have experience behind you. So even if something goes wrong, your experience will kind of take over. That's what I'm hoping. It's these net cases that are just like, well, I'm in a mood to die, so everybody else must die. Yeah. Yeah. Look, the, the idea of going up at, on a night flight and all you do is you, you take off and then you just sit there with other guys and there's nothing. You, <laughs> basically, it's dark in front of you until you get to the next place. But then again, that, when you get into something, you be, you know, you're going to be good at it. <laughs> yeah. Why, why drink and fly when you can smoke and sorry, why drink and drive when you can smoke and fly? Uh, that's a decent point. Carl makes a decent point about, um, I said, you know, maybe these people should be incentivized on the other side. Carl, I was meaning more about like the city they're going to, not the afterlife. Yeah. <laughs> oh, JC's back. <laughs> this is why pilots stay in hotels. So everything they eat and drink is documented. Mostly everything. Gosh, sounds like they're living a life of COVID. Mm. But you know, it's not like just pilots who maybe are sabotaging things for other people. Have you ever heard of the phrase firefighter arson? No. It goes on Wikipedia page. That's where you know it's an actual syndrome. of. So Firefighter arson is a you, persistent phenomenon involving a very small minority of firefi firefighters who are also active arson. No, because if there's no fire, there's no firefighting. <laughs> it kind of makes sense. But again, this is quite a dodgy thing to worry about in the world. I think the past three stories are so cruel. <laughs> Wait, now. Okay. Picture, okay. picture this, 9-11, okay. Carl brought it up, 9-11, who, sure. who had, I mean, there were so many jokes about this, but like firefighters were getting more checks than ever. That's what it came down to, right? Because they were heroes. They were the guys on ground zero. They're supporting all these things. And like wherever they went, people bought them drinks. They were absolute heroes for being firefighters. And then there was no fires. So these guys are going... Hmm. It's like rugby players, right? If there's no matches, they're not heroes. So it's so like, they were like, you know what? I don't have a job, so let me give myself something to do. Oh no, it's all about the, the, the jobs there, okay? Because they're in essential service, so they're going to be sitting around playing cards or whatever, yeah, sliding not down doing poles. Anything, there's so nothing really going on. But if there's a fire, then they're caught into action. They get the adrenaline rush. Some of them, it's been turned out through experiment, or obviously through a lot of research. For some of them, it's actually a sexual thing. It's the, it's the it's the arousal of the emergency which then propels them to become arsonists. They sound like narcissists. They're massive narcissists. <laughs> this, <laughs> That's what they sound no, the, like. The, this, this one guy, um, I think in the space of three years, he was connected with like 60 different fires. 
So obviously he knows how to start a fire. Very good when it comes to fire and understanding that. And of then, course. Yeah. And, and and these guys are popping up all okay, over the place. So what? Do they pick like buildings? Do they pick places that are not too jan- dangerous so that even if the fly- fire kind of, you know, grows big and is like, like what happened? What's... People die. Buildings, but these guys, they just have to have fires. And this is a it's an actual thing. And like they are finding, I think there was something like in the in the last 20 years, there's been a million firefighters who have been arrested for arson. I don't know the exact stat, but it's okay. It's a, it's so I'm, I'm 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 on the Wikipedia, um, and here's a profile comparison. <laughs> uh, South uh, South Carolina, Carolina uh, Forest Compares uh, Commission. So it's white male, seventeen to twenty six. Product of disruption, harsh, unstable, nearing environment, poor relationship with fa- father, overprotective mother. If married, uh, poor marital adjustment, lacking in social and interpersonal skills, um, poor occupational adjustment, employed in low-paying jobs. Mm. Mm. Okay, so average to above average intellect, mm. but poor. Uh, okay, to fair academic performance in school. So this is this like kind of like the profile of people that do this. Yeah. So again, it goes. People need firefighters. I mean, in this country, we need firefighters, but the government doesn't give money to these things. There's fires everywhere, right? There's very few fire trucks. But let's not get into what the the, the local version of the story is. <laughs> you know, it's gonna be worse. <laughs> But it's quite something. Again, it goes back to like people you need to trust in life, or actually just somewhere else. You know, I was always taught, never trust a man in uniform because they are crazy. And I'm starting to understand why. I've literally never heard that saying in I my entire you. life. So, <clears throat> <laughs> as a young female, you get advice. And you're, the advice that you usually get from elders is when you pick a partner, because this is going to be the most important decision you ever make. You know, these are the do's, these are the don'ts. And one of the things... That I think it was my uncle. He is like never date a, a man who's in uniform because they are cray cray. They are cray cray, and the past two stories um they show that. So no to pilots, y'all cray cray. No to firefighters, y'all cray cray. No to policemen because we all know how y'all are all just corrupt. No. Well, some people, I, I mean, sure, there's various things you can tell a kid. I just didn't think that was going to be one. And of it's them. stuck. Like I still, and now I'm seeing that advice. Yeah, well, again, um, people want attention here, and they also want to be able to a chance to prove themselves. And again, if you if you got a job that you don't have to do very often, maybe that's a good thing. It's not always about look at me; I can do this. Therefore, I'm going to cause a situation. Yeah, but I don't know about this one. Like, you go into the job knowing that you're going to start havoc, just so you can be a hero doesn't make sense to me it just it really doesn't i'm not okay with it uh it makes perfect sense to me but hey let's get into some sport because i've I inadvertently i've talking points here that all speak to the <laughs> demise of, of humanity and how should people are <laughs> all right see this is why i don't host shows guys this is where i mean you know, i'm good for the sports and uh well what a weekend it is so let's get into that it is of course beyond the scoreboard with me ben kopinski powered by super bet Go to Beyond the Scoreboard page on cliffcentral.com and you can get a 50 rand free bet when you sign up with Super Bets. Just click on the banner on the right hand side. It's as simple as that. And then you get to play. Sometimes in the back of my knowledge, my tips, my expertise, or just because you want to and it's fun. And of course, this is a great weekend for it. So this weekend, no doubt, we have um, we got the rugby, we got the cricket, we've got English football. Let's start with rugby. Of course. And now I say that with like, should be, shouldn't be, because tonight's like the third and fourth playoff game, okay? So that's okay. when, if you lose your semi and you're gutted, you want to go home. And then World Rugby's like, no, no, hang on. We need to find number three and number four. Play one more <laughs> game. And these teams are not into it. They are not into it. They really couldn't give a toss. But like, England are going to play Argentina at nine o'clock tonight. England were good in the semis. Let's be honest. They were good against the box. They played the right kind of game. They executed well. And they just kind of let it slip. Um, which does make you lose, even though if you talk to English people, apparently they were unlucky. Well, yes, but that's sport, right? You've got to be better than the other team. So they're going to be hoping to be better than the other team this weekend properly, which is Argentina, 
who were useless in that semifinal. I mean, they missed over, I think, 50 tackles. Their set pieces were dog shit. And then to add insult to injury, this is one of the most embarrassing things that I think has happened in the rugby field. Argentina managed to get a bit of an advantage because Scott Barrett got sent to the, to the sin bin mm-hmm. in the second half of the semifinal, right? When his time was up and he could go back on the field, he was like, nah, we're good. We're going to play with the 14 guys. <laughs> <laughs> the ultimate insult. Like, we got thrashing these oaks so hard that we're not even going to bother bringing on the old guy again. We're just going to practice playing with 14 because, you know, <laughs> it, didn't make, it didn't make any difference. Argentina did nothing. So that is Friday night's game. Okay, so tomorrow night is the big one. It'll be South Africa versus New Zealand, mm-hmm. 9 o'clock. Now, it's quite even on the betting. Okay. Um, you know, you would think that New Zealand are going to this favorites because of what they've done in previous games and they've got really like momentum. Mm-hmm. The box only really scraped through in their last two matches by one point. But when it comes to finals rugby, they kind of are pretty good at it. Mm-hmm. I mean, this is the thing that always raised their game, right? Looking head to head between these two teams, they've both won three. So this will be the first time one team can be the four time world champions. It's all to play four. <laughs> See what you did there. Yeah, got that. Um, they've played each other five times in the Rugby World Cup previously. Um, South Africa played them in 1995, 1999. They won both of those, including the triumph with the title and the trophy in 95. And then I think it was 20, 2011, 15, 19, it doesn't matter. Three twos on the head to head there. So, what's it going to be for today's, for tomorrow's game? Well, it's going to be 90% chance of rain in the Stade de France. Yeah. So, what is. What are your thoughts on the 7-1 split? It's good because it's raining. Like okay. it's hammering down, okay? It's hammering down. It'll be like Saturday's game against England, but worse. Mm-hmm. So there's a phrase that goes around in rugby called 10-man rugby. Okay. okay. That's when your forwards just do all the business and mm-hmm. then your 9-10 kick the ball until you get a penalty and score a try or mm-hmm. whatever it may be. So when people go, oh, it's so unfair that Marnie Libbock got taken off last week. You know, I wrote this thing on Twitter as, uh, to use an F1 analogy. It's like, it became a wet weather race. So you got to come into the pits and get different tires. And that's what it was, basically. So now we've got massive rain. Mm. So Monty Lovick's not going to be in the squad at all. We've got 100 Pollard starting because he knows how to, let's be honest, kick and close the game out. And that's going to be the game. So it won't be the most interesting game of the World Cup. I, I doubt it. It's going to be hugely tight. Everything to play for. And it's going to be wet. Both teams are unchanged. They're going to mm-hmm. go for their absolute best. And they literally are going to just try and ram the crap out of each other for 80 minutes. So I made a video about this a while ago at the start mm-hmm. of the tournament around the 7-1 split. If you are unfamiliar with why the substitutions are the way they are or how rugby works, just go onto my Instagram and you can find that video. So, Last question before you yes. go into another sport. Um, there's been quite a lot of talks about, especially after the England and um, South Africa game, um, about the scrums and that, you know, they should like change the rep rules scrums no scrums don't know there's a bit of like a, it's it's a dangerous game what are your thoughts on that it's funny how people who can't do things are the ones that moan about them mm-hmm. it's quite simple okay the scrum is, is you get rugby league and you get rugby union rugby league is about running the ball around no set pieces like that and sure if you like that go for it john smith said it this week if you don't like scrums go play rugby league Stop moaning about a skill set that we managed to perfect, master, and resource properly. As simple as that. The game starts and ends around scrums, lineouts, and what you do with your forward pack. We've been saying it for a very, very long time. Rusty and Jacques Nina have obviously been smart enough to actually then master this thing, mm-hmm. right? So these Northern Hemisphere teams get to the tournament and they go, oh, but look at them. They've got so many forwards and they're so big and strong in their scrum. It's like, yeah, that's the game. That's like basically playing cricket and going, oh, hang on a second, that guy's bowling a bit too fast. <laughs> okay, well, get your own guy who can bowl fast or bat better. I'm so tired of these people with their little <laughs> bitchy whines. And like there's been some, mo- like, this World Cup's been amazing. Yes. But there's been some moaning here. No, there's been a lot. <laughs> people don't like it when South Africa play and dominate. It's dangerous for the game. Guys, work That's harder. That's what I've heard. You know, another great sporting story is that um, Ian Poulter, who's a golfer, mm-hmm. and um, he wanted to hitch a ride with Tiger Woods because Tiger had a private jet. And Ian didn't have a private jet. And there's lots of space on Tiger's jet, right? So he could have just got on there rather than having to go pay a ticket, sit there with the cattle or whatever. Mm-hmm. And um, he just said to Ian, straight up, play better. How's that for a burn, huh? It's like, don't bitch to me because you're going to have to ride home and I've got all the space in my jet. You just play better. So if you were moaning about the box scrum, just play better. Just play better. So like, what's the prediction going to be? Who are we going to back in this? Yes. 
it's very hard to go anywhere other than the Springboks. It really is when you think about it. The the expansive counterattack game that the All Blacks may have, I think it'll be counteracted with the conditions and the sheer psycho nature of our ability to tackle anything that moves. And it comes back to a kicking game. And the All Blacks kick a lot. You know, there's always that misconception that they run the ball all the time. They kick probably more than anyone. But um, I just think that the cohesiveness, what it comes back to and how we've seen so many times that these players just play for more than the whistle and the 80 minutes. These guys are on a mission and they've got it done, you know. I know the All Blacks have gone back to back. 2011-2015, they went back to back to become the first um defending champions to win it and yes they've got an incredible team i think their their loose trio is something to really be worried about they're so good in the breakdowns but the box are the box when it comes to this kind of stuff i really do think it's like all of this plays out yes they were a bit flat last week but last week was always going to be that that middle of week you know it was like when you had a massive night on a thursday and you want to go jaw again on the friday you're not quite yourself but then you Pick yourself up to be proper on Saturday. That's where we are right now with the box. Uh, look, it is going to be tight. I mean, like we saw last week, conditions don't exactly make for high scoring. So I'm going to say what absolutely every other pundit in the world right now is saying and say box by two. Okay. Fair. 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 Yes. Uh, who cares? You guys are going to make your own bets anyway. <laughs> uh, there's also other rugby this weekend. There's the United Rugby Championships. Of course, that is like what makes us, I think, so good as the box is that we have all this Northern Hemisphere exposure mm -hmm. and we play in all different kind of conditions and we get to really work on our scrums. Mm -hmm. So that's where it all starts from, the rugby champion or United Rugby Championship. Saturday, we've got the Stormers versus the Scarlets. The Scarlets just took 60 against the Bulls, so I wouldn't exactly back them. That'll be at 4 o'clock on Saturday. And these games are at a great time because, you know, obviously the box game's at 9. So you can watch these before. Leinster will take on the Sharks at 6 o'clock. And then Edinburgh will be hosting the Lions at 6. And then on Sunday, if you still want more rugby, more rugby. Some people wake up and they just go, more rugby. Sure. Then you can have it. Ulster are taking on the Bulls. And that'll be at 7 o'clock. Right. Into the cricket. As you know, in the Cricket World Cup, there's 10 teams. They all play each other once. Mm -hmm. And then we get to the semifinals. So you sure. want to be in the top four. Currently, we've got India 5 out of 5. We know they're going to win. India, five out of five at n number one spot. We've got SA at number two. Doing Ooh. so well here. Four wins out of five. The only game we've lost so far has been against the Netherlands. Our net run rate is plus two, three. It's incredible. We've been hammering teams. Hammering yeah, them. they hammered the English. And <laughs> hammered Bangladesh. And we hammered Australia, Sri Lanka. And then third and fourth, we've got um, New Zealand and Australia. Now, those two teams, uh, memory serves, they're playing this weekend. But first, today, mm -hmm. Pakistan versus uh, South Africa. Now, Pakistan, are, they're not great. They're, um, they're really not great. They lost, lost to Afghanistan, mm. uh, as England did, I know. So that'll be today at 10.30. So it's a nice Friday bit of uh, sport there. And then tomorrow, Australia versus New Zealand at 7 o'clock. Netherlands versus the Bangladesh. At 10 and then Sunday, huge, huge game India versus England. Now, the two countries' history and cricket aside, if England don't win this one, okay, so England currently are ninth, they've hmm. played five, they've won one, they've lost four, Oof. and now they're playing the best team in the world. Oof. Tough I wouldn't to be. want to be English, and they lost, they lost the spring box last week, and they're playing in the, the wooden in the game no one cares about. Tough times for England. But, you know, you can always pivot into the football. So tonight we've got Crystal Palace versus Spurs. Spurs high-flying, still top of the log. I know, I know. People always give those memes like, how did they get there? And you see like a horse stuck in a fence, like a car on, on a hill. And then it's like Spurs <laughs> top of the log. And uh, yeah, those memes are pretty good. They're pretty funny. I know because I had them last year with Arsenal. Chelsea on playing on Saturday against Brentford at 1.30. Arsenal versus Sheffield United at 4 o'clock. Wolves versus Newcastle at 6.30. And then Sunday, we've got Liverpool versus Nottingham Forest at 4. And then the big one. What a weekend this is. Yeah. Sunday, Man United versus Man City at 5.30. Even if Man United are on like three legs and they've got like scurvy, this is still a big game. So don't say that oh, Man City always so much better. It's the Manchester Derby. It is one of the biggest things in sports. Mm -hmm. And that is pretty much your entire sporting weekend. There might be a few other things here and there, but those are your big ones. And of course, the Bok game, Saturday at yes. 9 o'clock. Superbet supports responsible gambling, strictly no under 18s, and winners know when to stop. South African Responsible Gambling Foundation toll-free counseling hotline 0800 006 008. That's nice. your sport for the weekend. Wow. Nice. I've it's not all been this excited about sports. So much. So much. It's been a year for it, though, Ham. It really has been. It, it's been the year of the World Cups. So I think that's why 
I've kind of been roped into the whole like feeling and getting into sports this year, but we'll see how it goes. Yeah. Okay. Well, speaking of sports, we've got celebrity entertainment bouts will boost boxing attendance. Boxing SA's acting CEO. Mm -hmm. I feel like the word acting can now be redundant in this country. Because it's everyone's an acting CEO in this country. Anyway, the one for boxing. Um, Lucy Kazue Sitole says the time for the boxing fraternity to embrace the, perfect, the practical implementations of innovative ideas, including the introduction of celebrity entertainment bounds, has come. Mm. But they must not be expected to see hardcore boxing because celebrities are not trained to fight. See, I mean, that whole sentence just breaks down as like, okay, prepared, but also be prepared for like an inferior product. He said yesterday, in reacting to mixed feelings about the entertainment bought by Zodwa Wabantu versus Manaka Lanaka I saw at the Ridge that. Casino in, Pum in Pumalanga on Sunday. Oh, oh I, I, I understand where this acting CEO is coming from. I saw a clip of that fight. It was not a boxing fight. It was... Well, we've seen... Who was it? Casper University had a fight against this little oak recently. Yeah. And they weren't even the same weight class. The oak was appreciably smaller than the other guy yeah you see that's the thing like i think i will say in essay we haven't gotten the celebrity boxing right as opposed to in america and the uk where they get fit and they really try and learn the sport right it's like okay you guys take this seriously hence why i watch because i really like you in south ah, it's just kind of like yeah some period tomorrow you can just go and you know get into the ring with ben and it's like mm -hmm. no there's, well, there's an like, art to it. It's like Ryan. We, we want him to fight. <laughs> but he needs to be trained. He needs to be trained, exactly. And, and know the rules of the game. And that's the issue. So when I saw that clip, I was like, oh, this is not boxing. I don't know what this was because the, I don't know, was it, was it, uh, was it the Wabantu or uh, Minaka? Like the one was like going for a jab and then the other one hugged her and then they just went down. And I was like, this is not boxing. It looked more like kickboxing. Mm. But it wasn't boxing. They went, mm. so... See, the thing about this, and, and I get it, is that people went into boxing because it's like guys want to box. It's a very masculine, very alpha kind of thing. Um, but ultimately, celebrities want to box each other because it's attention and mm -hmm. it's like they have beef, right? Yeah. Because that's what happens with people all the time. They have beef all the time and then they get a boxing fight and then it's like, yay, this is how we settle it. Because if you go fight in the car park, you can be arrested and it's not such a great look. But if you fight in these celebrity boxing things, you get to like kind of settle a beef. And you... yeah, then don't. I don't know. Like MMA, do that rather. Um, no. Boxing. Trust me, you need more skills to MMA. But box. The thing is, with it's so. I, the little that I know, you need to get you know the jabs, the hooks. Like that's that's basically what it is, and a lot of footwork. Why are You're we hugging? Get in shape. Yes, why are we hugging each other and going down and then doing tired. this and whatnot? And it's not, we're not here to hug. That's that, the issue. But if you ask any, go to a boxing class. It is the one of the most hardcore things you can do. It is so tiring. So they hug and they fall down because they have zero cardio. So they think they can swing. Everyone thinks they can fight. You know, fighting is hard and it takes so much of you. And because it's one of those things where you can get hurt, you basically, you gas out quicker because you've got this whole adrenaline dump, right? So you can get up for it and you can think you're going to be amazing. You take a couple of swings, <laughs> done. Yeah, so that's also another, like respect us enough to get in shape for it. Like I have no issues with yeah, celebrity people, boxing. I, think, I have no issues with like, because th they need money in the industry, right? In the, the boxing industry to. Yeah. So I'm saying, keep doing if you're seeing that people are going to watch a celebrity boxing match keep doing that i don't have an issue with it but respect us enough to get these people in shape to at least learn the craft for a month or two or three months before respect us Claire. because when we do see the clips on social media i'm just like this is not it and how more if i was a professional i'd be so mad I would be, I'd be like, this is just a mockery of this. No, it, it is, it is. But again, at the same time, Sipuri, if you are going to the rich casino in Pumalanga, there's, you have other problems in life right now. <laughs> Seeing Sodwa Wabantu versus Manaka Ranaka, this could actually be the highlight. So again, horses for courses, right? So uh -huh. I don't know what the, I don't know what the Pumalanga phrase is, but I mean, like um, KNA says that maybe politicians should try boxing. That would be a great way to get it. And I reckon Helen Zilli would kick most people's asses in that place. Um, Ronald McDonald versus Joker match. Mm, I don't know. Trevor Noah versus Charlie Theron. Ah, 
don't know about that. Um, and obviously, like people always ask about Logan Paul because he's the celebrity boxing kind of person. But he's fit. But he's fit. You, that's my point. thing. And he's so, still not great. I, you see, that's that's where he's you still not great. you know that it's technique and and the art of it, right? But the fact that he's fit and he actually he he puts an effort. That's what I appreciate. He puts an effort. And at the end of the day, this is supposed to be entertainment. Yeah. So I'm entertained by him not really knowing the sport. But the fact that he is fit and he thinks he can go toe-to-toe with a he, professional. He looks like a boxer. Yes. He, come on. Come on, y'all. That's so, all I'm saying. In other news, big changes for alcohol laws in South Africa still coming. I feel like there's always big changes coming. Social Development Minister Lindiwe Sisulu, sorry, Lindiwe Zulu says the government will review the liquor amendment bill increasing the drinking age to 21 years. Who is that going to help? The introduction of the 100 meter radius limitation of trade around educational and religious institutions. Yeah, okay. Banning of any alcohol sales and advertising on social and small media. The introduction of the new law liability clause also for alcohol sellers. Yeah, again, you know, it kind of goes back to this whole thing of suing meta. Okay, so now you want to tax and you want to prevent alcohol companies from advertising. You know how many people are going to lose jobs because of that? They're just, that's it. They're going to lose jobs. But it also does the counter. Like when something is taboo and banned and you mustn't do it, don't do that. So like people just want to do more of it. Do you think if you tell people your legal drinking age is 21, they're going to go, oh, uh, you know what? Cool. That means I'm going to spend another three years really focusing on my education. <laughs> Says nobody. <laughs> Like all they're gonna be doing is how do I how do I find ways to look a twenty one and how do I find ways to get more bourgeois when I'm eighteen? That's yeah. it. No, I I get it because politicians, as we know, they're very simple people, right? Their their brains are kind of like beta before VHS, so they look at things and they go, hmm, how do we get an outcome? I don't know. Let's stop something else. But you've also got to look. How do you stimulate society? So if you got, let's just use alcohol in teenagers as a problem. Mm -hmm. If that's an issue in this world, in this in South Africa, right, in this yes. country, maybe think, okay, well, maybe if they had jobs, maybe if they had purpose, maybe if they had sports, maybe if they had Jesus. I mean, let's really open the open the, the open <laughs> I the like bag the here. Last one. <laughs> maybe if they had these things, they wouldn't be getting hammered every weekend. So, look, I know. I will say this. I will say this. I don't think it's necessarily um, the kids at fault here. I think they do repeat the behaviors of parents. So, good point. So, what do the parents have? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, I think for me, it's like SA does have a drinking problem, and that's what we're running away from. We keep saying, oh, no, you mustn't drink until you're 21, or let's just move uh, liquor stores 100 meters away. And what, but that's not solving the real issue. The real issue is that South Africans are depressed. Um, the cost of living is at an all time high. Um, people just feel hopeless and whatnot. And so they turn to something that will give them that boost of, oh, okay, I yeah. can forget about my problems. And that's what's happening in the, the country it's like a quick fix to a bigger issue so deal with the actual issues instead of just stealing the money instead of just making more ridiculous uh bans and whatnot and 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 just focus on fixing some well, the whole like symptom and cause thing right so yeah I think that's how the saying goes so social development social development minister lindiwe zulu is obviously looking at this from her little microscopic outlook on this whole world She's not like, well, maybe if this, these parents weren't such deadbeats and we had more more job opportunities or there was more purpose in life, this wouldn't be a problem, right? Mm -hmm. So Clint from Naval, obviously from Naval, knows a lot about drinking. <laughs> Look at America, legal drinking age, 21, also the country with the mass shootings. Very good point. Yep. Got a lot of suppressed people. Mm -hmm. Alcohol is coffee for some people in SA and they'll find what's to get. Kids buy cigs at shop owners, don't Snipes, come on, just type a bit better here. <laughs> I feel like I'm regressing as a human just trying to read your sentences. Look at how Hubbly is sour to kids in school. You've, you've, guess... you've typed S-K-U-L and I imagine you want to say school. See, alcohol. Maybe this is what derails yeah, Snipes have, Are you on. already, uh, you know, drunk? Are you already just tipsy? Are you already just... Uh... Snipes, I'm actually in solidarity with you. Your ability to type shows how dire this problem is. Maybe, yeah, maybe we're making too light of this. You know, there's this whole chicken shortage, right? Yes. The eggs and stuff. How and this are you week, feeling, Ben? I had a bit of a false dawn. I went into a pick and pay the other day and there was loads of eggs. And okay. like the free range, the, like the real eggs. Okay. And then I was like, 
great. I knew this would be temporary. And then since then, I've seen nothing. <laughs> I'm back on no eggs again. <laughs> but there has been cocaine with 80 million rand found stuffed in frozen chickens. Wait, what? Wow. Police... Wait, talk about... Wait, is, is this a true? Is this legit? Oh, I would hope so. I mean, the producers of the show has thrust this ahead of me to say this. <laughs> Breaking news. Police have intercepted a smuggling scam involving cocaine stuffed in chickens imported by a local frozen food importer. After a tip-off, police found cocaine with 18 million rand hidden inside the poultry after tracking down the shipment from Brazil to the Dubé trade port in Etiquini on Saturday. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I guess now we kind of understand why we do have a... Los Polos, Los Locos, eh? <laughs> a shortage. I think. I think now we also understand, you know? But that's good. Imagine that. Uh, like, so they, they've got the shipment that's come in. There's been a tip off. Guys are getting rid of things here and there. Chickens are getting put here and there. What if you just go to your local supermarkets? You mind your own business in life and you come home, you put the thing in the roast, and there's just like 20 <laughs> grams of cocaine just seeping out. <laughs> but you don't know, and the whole family eats it. <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, this is fascinating. A, eh? 80 mils a lot. So well, whoever's I, shipping it in is know. big is it, mad. Is 80 million rand okay, obviously, but like how many chickens are we talking of being stuffed here? I, I, I don't know. So if you think And is this a great stuff? Like like what's the If you think cocaine bear was a good story <laughs> to make a movie out of, <laughs> cocaine chicken is going to be the next thing. Wait, and what what how do the chickens look? What do what do they look for when they're actually going through the chickens? You know, well, where did they stuff it and put it? No, no, they, you, did they just say this is flour? So, so. The, these are frozen. So, I mean, again, taking chicken after the the slacking, and then you insert the narcotics, and then you freeze it. Hmm. Kind of ingenious, because how do you check for cocaine in a frozen piece of meat? You see, but now Sanella asks a good question. Is this how the egg chickens got sick? Cocaine took eggs from us? <laughs> <laughs> it's all starting to make sense, you know. It's just one of those stories, like it's starting you, you, to make sense. It's like you wake up and go, "Okay, what next?" You know, we've gone through a lot the last three years. What could possibly be next? Cocaine in frozen chickens. There we go. Who had that on the whole bingo sheet of, of general I, fuckery? I wouldn't have guessed. So, they, so clearly now um, they're no longer using humans to, you know, transport the goods. This makes so much more sense because a human obviously ingest a certain amount of cocaine and they've got to go through the long haul flight. But yeah. this, I mean... You could do it on one like ship, how shipment. Many, yeah. How many frozen chickens can go into a container? I'm thinking thousands. Yeah. So that's what I'm saying. 80 million is a lot of money. Yeah. So I guess... And, you and know, so the, the guy who brought it in, they big mad. This is going to mess up the Colonel's secret um, spices, yeah? I don't think this was in the original <laughs> menu. <laughs> Jason, as she says, that KFC is tasting good at the moment. Uh, Tracy says, makes for a great chicken licking combo. Mm -hmm. yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, by the way, you know that, that story of the, the pilot who put his um, kid on the lap? Yeah. That was in Russia, believe it or not. Yeah. About 20 minutes ago, Tracy confirmed it, and I just forgot to mention it. So we've learned a couple of things in this first hour, right? I'm not going to say anything. <laughs> no, I, I actually had other stories about lawsuits. <laughs> can, can, no. we, can we fit in one more? <laughs> But can we just go one Why? more? Why? Is this a lawsuit Friday? No, it's really not. It's just like, you know, something that Should we get a lawyer in here? Is 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 there a lawyer <laughs> in the comment section? Please. So, you know, Dunkin' Donuts is a big chain in America. Yeah, bo. Um, So Americans, because if you look at the size of them, they live their lives about that. Okay. So one um, uh, customer, patron? Mm-hmm has taken them to court and has sued them for three million dollars. Okay, why? Because she spilt her coffee on her lap. So she goes there and now, again, this is one of those things that maybe if you're new to this whole coffee game, if you are buying your coffee from Dunkin' Donuts, you shut your mouth. You're already making a bad choice in life. What they do with these big chains is they burn the coffee. It comes out way too hot because it kind of masks the fact that it's basically a shit coffee. You need to go to a certain barista to get a certain... Let's not get into that. But you're going to get terrible coffee. And it's going to be so hot that you can't drink it for at least seven minutes. This woman, obviously, she's just so addled with like fast food and other bad choices. She took a sip and she spilt it. And she had needed extensive skin grafts on her middle business area. 
third degree burns to her thighs, third, oh, groin, third, and abdomen. Third degree burns. Yeah, she went on to oh. say that she incurred two hundred thousand dollars in medical bills. And again, my heart, my heart goes out to you because nobody wants that anywhere in the body, least of all in your nether Yeah, regions. but like third degree burns. But I she think is saying, I understand now. She's saying that the cup lid wasn't fastened properly so now she's gone and you see that's fair enough is it i think it is because when you do get your so we don't have a but i'll use my phone as a if this is the the cup of coffee right when they give it to you the lid is already put on and what you tend to do is wait for a couple of minutes because you know it's hot you can either feel it or it has that thingy in my body but you can feel it oh okay cool and when you take your first sip Right. If it's not sealed in properly, that's how the, that spill happens because it goes, go. Oh. So I, I understand if that's the case, so definitely. So she got, th- she got 3 million. Okay. Uh, She's, she alleges to have spent 200,000 in medical bills. Like, did they build her a new vagina? They must have. What, so I can tell you, so I used to watch like Judge Sorry, Mathis again, back I, in the day. And I 000? understand how it gets that, that, like three million. So she spent about what two hundred k on hospital bills. She's also quite elderly. Maybe that's why she's seventy. Yeah. So it's going to be for the hospital bills, right? The lawyer fees have to be covered by the the, the company, right? And then there's pain and suffering, emotional pain and suffering. The uh, days. See, this is the uh, layers I don't think about. Mm-hmm. So the days that she missed work or can't go to work or all of that, the psychological damage. They also have to factor that in, and that's how you get to three million rands. Well, three million US dollars. Three million, hey. Yeah. Well, I mean, look, it's not firefighter arson, but I mean, that's. It's hectic. Third degree burns. I'd also want to see. Like, I, I would also like to be an American for like all of one day, where I can just wake up one morning and just sue either my parents, um, sue you know big corporates for like just making this dress the wrong size and being mm. mad like they wake up literally and they're just like oh today i just want to get a couple of millions from x y and z so yeah. i'm going to sue so k and a in the comments here um that story is not five years old it's a recent story so <laughs> shove it up your ass um yes there has been previous stories oh hectic and yes that what happened here was that there was a story about five years ago as he's mentioned they've mentioned whatever's mentioned here and um that's why mcdonald's now serves low temperatures according to this person so this is dunkin donuts they're not all the same but yeah dunkin donuts is out of pocket for three million sure and um yeah just be careful wait have you won the the lawsuit Yeah, yeah they've given it so i mean um previously there was a for McDonald's. There was a three million claim, and they settled out of court for four eighty thousand. But yeah, I mean, look, now that you put the more compassionate slant on this, which I appreciate from you, a woman in the seventies having to deal with the rest of their life, having to go through skin grafts, and, mm, and it's quite high risk. So, look, should probably have to go back. I'm just saying that's how they get to that bill. Like I. I'm just breaking it down that she does not want to have any debt. Um, I'm guessing and she wants to pay off all her debts. Also, just don't buy coffee from these places. Anyway, yes. we got to take a break. Yes, so yes, people, yes. How do we take a break? What button do I press? <laughs> does it just go into... Does, does, does Ryan just get the piano going? How does it work? Are this you, is the one thing you guys can show me. Are, 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 you, are you ready? I'm ready. Okay, cool. It's the decade that just won't go away, mainly because we won't let it. It's That 80s Show, the show that taste forgot. Every Friday, Paolo and Dory remember the 80s. Movies, music, fashion, wham, beaches, and the half. If it was acceptable in the 80s, it will get you cancelled today. That 80s Show, new episode every Friday, live or as a podcast on cliffcentral.com.
This week on the Auto Trader Podcast. As a matter of fact, this press does a better job than the one on Tesla. Mm. Why do you say that? Is there a specific reason? If you look on a VW Polo, the front of the fender, I learned this when I was there, the front of the fender comes to a point. Mm -hmm. There's an extra step in the press process. You can see there. So the fender comes to a point. Yep. That is very difficult to do. Mm. To bring that fender to that sharp point. And it's perfectly done every single, single time. time. And that's, I think, the difference between this VW plant and, uh, you know, some other um, new startups yeah. that are uh, pressing vehicles. Those lines that you see on the between the bonnet and the fender, um, on the assembly line, yeah. um, there are cameras that read every line, every single millimeter every single uh, car, to, the, yeah. to see that those lines are uh, identical. identical. Yeah. Catch us every Monday at 9 a.m. on YouTube and on autotrader.co.za. All right, you're watching live and you saw Auto Trader ad. You can get to see George today as well, not just Monday. Who else is here today? There he is. It is Kooks in studio. I told you there was a big guest today. How's it going, bud? No, I knew I was going to do this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> just, just make sure he's not on mute. This is the one thing you got to get right today. Sounds like an old Zoom meetings back when you work together. <laughs> it is. Yeah, Cooks, I should go way back. Uh, when I say way back, maybe like one or two years. But Cheers, um, yeah. Cooks, I mean, I, I've, I, I know your story. I've told your story. Most people know you as just the guy on TV who makes everybody laugh now. Simpiwe was mentioning earlier how she likes your content. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Even that, she said other things for that. <laughs> That expose me, Ben. <laughs> no, it's a good, it's a good expose. There. I'll tell, I'll tell you something about Ben. Uh, ben, I was a pretty close to him, and uh, he's business partner Mike Sharman. So they're the first person people to actually give me a paid gig. Oh, nice. Yeah. So that when, when I was making videos as a teacher, I never knew you could make money from it. So then they got hold of me saying, "Listen, you, why don't you do this video? We're gonna pay you for it." I was like, "So I, what? Like, I was like, why? I don't understand." So I like, and I, I remember going back and forth, trying all types of different type of videos, like acting. They're like, "Just do the thing that went viral." I was like, oh, then like, and they paid me, and I was like, I think I'm not, I can't be a teacher anymore. <laughs> and oh, then, was was it that good, Ben? Do you, do you pay that well? Uh, <laughs> like, no, that was a start. Mean, that was a start. I, <laughs> I, I'm I, just, I, I, I don't pay anything. I just get, no, no, no. I'm just, clients I, get excited yeah. about ideas. No, no, no. I'm just asking for me, myself, and I. You know, like maybe I could just be another employee for the the company. You know, I'm, <laughs> yeah. I'm trying to hustle my way in. You know. Well, here you are, na naked, <laughs> trying to hustle your way in. There. Yeah, it, it is quite funny because if, if you're watching live, there's quite a tight shot on some people here. And it was mentioned. Guys, I have a dress on. I promise you. Like, She's starting her uh, own OnlyFans. It's just the, like the. Uh, I would not do it. that. <laughs> but I'm just, you know, I'm trying to look. No, no, it's, it's, it's fine. So, yeah, going back to Cook's story. Um, so, Cook's grew up in Eastern Cape and rugby was a big part of his life. He actually played. Uh, how, could we say professional for how long? Five years. Okay, so, so five years, yeah. Knows the game, played the game, was around the game, but he was in the game in the Eastern Cape, a bad time for the Kings, and it didn't really kind of work out the way you intended to. So then you started teaching kids how to play rugby, and then you actually realized that your real calling, cheapest, lovely wide shot. That's <laughs> <laughs> Tracy, you know, she's so ridiculous. <laughs> and, um, and then ultimately, you did get into what you're doing right now because you are probably one of the most likable guys on TV now, so much so that brands want you to do pretty much anything. I mean, every time there's a break in the rugby, you are on now. <laughs> and like, it, it gives me a sense of pride, really does, you know, because even when you first got to Joburg, like you mentioned, we had like first couple of paying gigs was just you being you and talking about stuff. And then I look at you doing like big, big work now. I mean, do you have an agent? Are you still doing this by yourself? Like how, how big has the operation gotten now? No, I've definitely got a manager this time. I couldn't, I couldn't do it on my own anymore. So it's... It's been a bit of a roller coaster, I think. Um, obviously, like we just moved to Joburg, I still sort of figuring things out, figuring out the city, and sort of figuring out the industry that I was in. But now, like like this year, it's been absolutely crazy with doing big adverts, and then, yeah, like I change. If sometimes I'm at home, I'll be at home watching sports as well, and I'll just like pop up on the screen, and I will get a little bit annoyed. I'm like, oh, no, other this guy again, <laughs> this guy again. But yeah, it's gotten really, really crazy. I think um, from just two years ago, yeah, about two years ago, I was doing the stuff in my in the hostel with the kids in my room and now adverts and have a manager. So it's becoming 
a whole big operation now, but uh, it's been like, I mean, I can't complain. What's been some of the most enjoyable stuff? Because obviously when you said you're making the videos in the hostel and like, you know, the kids are helping you film and stuff, you literally would take anything as your microphone and you put it by your face and you would just go live. Now, obviously you're in big production stuff, like really big ads. Like what have been the, your favorite ones recently? Well, the hard part now is I'm actually running out of things to use as a microphone. Like I've, I think I've exhausted all options, but I think the best has been obviously been working at Supersport has been an absolute thrill. I think I've been lucky. Between, I've been lucky to be involved in six World Cups in the last twelve months, from FIFA wow. World Cup, Women's T20 World Cup, Nepal World Cup, um, Junior World Cup this year. Um, I was at the URC final, so I think that's been the most. As I'm still a sports fan at heart, so you, you know, you find yourself watching the URC final and you start the field, and you, it's it's such an incredible thing to do. So I don't actually say I ever work actually because I'm pretty much getting to watch sport for a living and doing the thing that I dreamt of doing. I mean, that's been cool. I think the adverts and everything, that's been a bonus of the videos. But I think, yeah, I just think being able to, like, you know, like, you know be involved in the Rugby World Cup, it's it's weird to think, like, I'm actually part of the production. I'm, you're part of the thing and you actually feel the vibe. And it's completely different from being as, a, I watched the game actually as a fan last week. I don't think I can do that again. It's just way too stressful. I think it's I'm, harder. I'm just going to go yeah. back to just before you just, just worry about work but at work. But so, yeah, so that's probably been the highlight. So what are you doing for the game this weekend? So I'm in Pretoria. We're doing um, something that's closer build up. So in Pretoria, we're actually going to the mall. So like a little fan build up. Fan mall is going to be very cool. Um, so there. So at least there, it's, it's a little like I'll, I'll, I'll have no beers around me. Like that's what that's happened last time. I, just, I was too focused on the beers and in, in England, flipping trying to steal the same final away. So I actually need to be back at work. I think I almost jinxed the box last week. A hundred percent. I watched. I've worked every box game this year. Yeah. And then there was the one game I didn't work. I was like, no, I'm watching my mates. And like 60 minutes in, I was like, I can't believe I've jinxed the box. This is it. I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> like, grinning for the whole nation. Like, yeah. just because I wanted to have a drink. Like, this is what I, I put myself <laughs> first. And now I'm about to get knocked out of the World Cup. So now I'm definitely going back to studio. So you, you mentioned URC finals and those kind of things. You know, like, do you, like, in your line of work, like you said, you do actually work for Supersport. Like, do you have a schedule quite ahead of time? Or is it very much like there's different content angles and they basically plug you into them? Um, it depends. I mean, I think it's, um, I won't say it's like a day to day thing. So it's like, it's like a nine to five coming in, come in at eight and leave at five. It's obviously there's certain shoots we have, but I think when we have big games, we get told Tuesday, or Wednesday, listen, well, we get actually get a month schedule saying this is where you'll be for the month. And then in the week we get told, what are you going to do? What, what's the angles you're going to shoot at? What time you need to be there? So it's, it's, it's a big production, especially like now when it comes to World Cup. It's uh, it's funny with World Cups because everything's in limbo. For example, like it's yours waiting. Like when you, when you're we working the France game, it's like, oof, do we have work next week? Oh, what's going on in the England game? You're like, oof, if you're out, what happens next week? So it's been so it's so it's, so it's been hectic. So I mean, obviously with flights and knowing when to fly, and obviously it's like so from next, I'll say from after the World Cup, it goes back to normal. Like it's you have your monthly schedule. You know you're working at this PSL game. You're working at this URC game because until May, nothing changes. There's no playoff games happening. Mm. So when it's World Cups, it comes a lot more hectic. So, like you said, ultimately you still are a fan. Do you ever get starstruck, or there's certain kind of events where you like, oh my gosh, there's Brian Abana or something like that? <laughs> yeah, I, I, I try not to anymore because a lot of the time, this is how they see you now. Yeah, that's that is the that's, that's probably the weird part. I think I mean, I've obviously still first started Super Sport. You start, you see some of these guys. I remember like, I went to the park game last year at his park. And you, see, you saw Kubis Visa for the first time. Yeah. <laughs> and then you go there, you're like, oh, Jesus, we're in the side of the field. And some of the box were there. And you're like, oh, geez. Like, some of the, and then you're like, I think it was Ukanya, you're like, oh, my word, my inside. And then he comes to me, like, hey, Cooks, oh, my word, I can't believe I finally met you. I was like, oh, sort of throws you off. But I mean, I think the big ones are, I mean, obviously, I met Brian before, as I moved to Joburg. Um, and then you put me in charge of actually making fun of him all the time. It's, it's a job that everyone's got to have. Yeah. I, still, I, I still hold it. Even now with this Hall of Fame, it doesn't, it doesn't stop me. But. I'll tell you what, because, because we make fun of, someone has to make fun of Brian Abana. He's too much of a nice guy. He is too perfect. He is too liked. 100%. You've got to keep him in check. And I feel that between the two of us, we actually what make Brian Abana. 100%. Otherwise, yeah. you'd be too perfect. You'd be, like, is, you'd be like Dan Carter, but nicer. He gives it back, though. That's the problem. Because then, you, you, that, which is the nice thing. Trust me, he learned that from us. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so I must say thank you. But I think the biggest one, I think, was probably like, like Skulk Burger. That was one where, and I, when I met him, it's like, it's, it's World Player of the Year, it's Skulk Burger. So, I like Jean de Vries. I think those guys, when I, when I first sort of met him, but I remember last year meeting Michael Owen during the like, FIFA World Cup and like Owen Hargreaves. That was like... Mm. Yeah, it's a different kind of thing because yeah. different country, different, yeah. like very international. 
So that was the one where like, geez, I saw this guy as a kid, like on TV. So it's like, oh, and you don't expect to bump into them. But it's, the weird transition now is you seeing guys like, I got, I got mates who were like last week, I landed from East London, from Durban, sorry. And I saw Jean de at the airport and I was with a mate of mine. He was like, oh my word, Jean de Villiers. I'm like, oh, it's a Jean. <laughs> <laughs> like, 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 I don't know why you're going for it's a Jean. Like, so that's the, the big transition now. So speaking of transitions, Crooks obviously moved up here as a young professional man. Mm -hmm. um, the dating scene, no doubt, very different up here than it was back in the Eastern Cape. Just more some, numbers, actually. Some people, <laughs> we, 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 we're going to get that picture up on screen here to kind of reference something for this. Um, oh, the, the dating... Yeah, Cooks, I'm not going to pry in your personal life if you've got a girlfriend or not. So <laughs> let's, let's not make the comment section go too, too lit here. Okay. But I do want to bring this up here because I thought this was quite funny this week. Mm -hmm. So... Oh. The, there we go. So there is a picture of a woman straddling what looks to be a basin in a, know, like a mall toilet. But that's not the main focus but, of no, the no, image. No, I'm, I'm just teeing it up. Okay, she's okay. teeing herself up here, okay? <laughs> she's in like gym pants. You can see she works out. It's a very odd pose, okay? But from this lofty position, gosh, is she, <laughs> is she calling some shots here? So she says, this woman whose name's been blanked out, she says, here is a list of places women absolutely refuse to go to on first dates. Mm -hmm. And thank you, ladies, for reaching out and help me make this list. Mm -hmm. So a lot of these are going to be um, American orientated, but I think you'll get the understanding of like, so she's written here, Cheesecake Factory, Applebee's, Chili's, Chipotle, Olive Garden, The Movies, Your House. Can we, wait, 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 can, wait, yes. can you take, can we take so a second? So I'm with her on that one. Can we, yes. So I wouldn't say recently, but a while back on TikTok, there was a trend of young ladies um, who basically were like, if a guy invites you over to his place as a first date, don't steal anything. Don't do that because he's expecting That's that. Not what what? You to go. So, so the don't, fourth date, you can steal some no, stuff. No, no, like, no. first date, no. Fourth date, you can still steal No, <laughs> listen, 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 right? And they were like, don't do that. But what you will do is just inconvenience him, you know? So, like move things around place things where he wouldn't think they would be so a good example where is he while this is happening is this guy <laughs> fancy around and then he's in the toilet straight like, away I, I don't know but like a good one was like you know the microwave um it's that glass uh center thing that you yeah. put your plates on yeah. but underneath it is that circle thing right that actually moves that wheel thing so they're like take that out and put it like in the deep freezer or like place it like Jesus. somewhere where he yeah. wouldn't get it. Rather or, just take the microwave. Like just <laughs> rather take rather, the rather whole just, microwave. Rather just say no. Can, yeah. we, can, can, can we get the list back up here? Because I, I all I'm saying, all I'm saying is that that's a good one. Just inconvenience him. Don't steal. Just inconvenience him. He'll learn. Okay, so she carries on to say any fast food chain, Buffalo Wild Wings, uh, a buffet, the gym, Starbucks, church, coffee dates, ice I, cream dates, family functions, movie nights. Somewhere that requires a long drive, nightclubs, a bar for just drinks, Waffle House, sports events. Now, I've, I've got to ask, like, where does she get off saying that <laughs> there's now all these rules of engagement? I mean... Don't you know taking a hunty to McDonald's is okay, illegal no, no, as no, a date? No, some of these I totally get. But now she is basically putting hard and fast rules into anything. It's like, it, when did people make rules about this kind of stuff? If someone was to take you on a date... You judge them on where they want to go. So if the guy's going, let's go on a first date, come to my place, then you go, I don't think we're gonna this is gonna work out. Or first date, we're gonna go to church. And the person is like an atheist, like one of the people in the comments here today, the joking atheist. Okay. So then No. But then you're looking at this wrong. Let, let me school you. Let me school you. A date. This woman doesn't sound like easygoing. That's the way I'm going with this. <laughs> she sounds yeah. like hard work uh, right off the bat. She's named 28 places where you don't where you shouldn't go. <laughs> Well, like about like five, six, I'm like, I disagree with everything else. I'm like, you're right. And here's the thing. A date or the purpose of a date is to get to know the person you are talking to. Right. So yes. the whole purpose is for us to talk. So movies, no, we don't talk. That's two hours gone. Right. Um, I disagree with the long drive because you need to talk. So a long drive is cool, but also you want to do something that just in case there's no chemistry with this person, you don't have to be 
there for another 45 minutes. So coffee dates are perfect because as soon as yeah, the coffee is done. So this woman's going, she said drinks at a bar. No, no I disagree no. with that. That's nonsense. So what she's saying, what? she's circling herself into this corner of like, what is it? A hot yeah. air balloon. Is, yeah. this what, <laughs> is, this just, is this the bottom line Let here? me tell you, there's this trend like women want guys to support their lifestyle or like be exposed to new things. And I think that's a bit unfair, right? I think that's just, don't do that. Like we're not doing that. A date is just for you to get to know the person and it doesn't need to be expensive. He doesn't need to break the back bank because he doesn't know you. Yeah. Coffee, ice cream, drinks, um, a drive. I think those are all appropriate as a first date. If you want to get to know the person, because as soon as the coffee is done and you're like, ah, this one, ah, it's not for me. Yeah, you can be like, Oh, it was great meeting you. Bye. Now we watching movies for two hours. It's a church service. What if your pastor offends me? Now I'm mad. <laughs> like what? The, what the hell? Like what's? What, what are we gonna talk about? The Holy Spirit? What if I didn't catch it that day? Mm-mm. Mm-mm. It's like it's okay. a sporting event. I don't like. Like you shouldn't, shouldn't be like, hey, it's like, it's like any sporting events. You're like so. What if I, what if I met you? On, it's a bit bored. What if I met you on Wednesday? Hey, like can you something on Saturday? Like what's well, the walk a on Saturday? So like. I'm not going to the stadium, but it would be with me. It's like, maybe you can come there. It's like, no. Tell you what, it would be a bad thing to take into a current book game. So tense. She'll say, she'll say something stupid. <laughs> yeah, 100%. She'll say something stupid like, why is the ref in yellow? You'd yeah. be like, you know what? We're okay, done. please don't judge me because I am that girl. I'm that girl who doesn't really know the rules of the game, but I'm keen to do something that you like. Yeah. So... Don't judge me. Okay. I'll, I'll be that girl. But then, like, but then, you, what you'll do is you'll read the room. You'll realize it's the yeah. World Cup finals. The intensity is high, and this is no. Day but the thing is, you also have to like be like if like there's certain like I didn't know what a scrum was until like a couple of weeks ago, right? And now that I do, I'm like, let's go! Like I, I get into it. So I think that's also the thing. Once you know the rules, like oh, okay, that's a penalty, and they quickly like oh, what's that? And you're like, oh, that's that. And then you're like, you're back in the game. That's it. So cooks, you. you Rather unprompted, say that's more of a numbers game here in Joburg. How, how are some of the first dates been in your in your tenure so far? The crease We're different here in Joburg. I think. I mean, Pete, have, have you used sporting events? Have you gone? To- <laughs> no, 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 no. Definitely, I, I'm the. I was the. I was the coffee date top. Is like I said, in and out. It's um. If it's not going well, you can have coffee. And you can just walk away. I think like, like you got to earn the right to go out. So you can't just go dinner first. So true. I mean, dinner's aggressive. Like you got to go. Like you said, what if you don't, you can't get along and it's. Oh crap! I've actually just had my second beer and I haven't eaten yet, and I don't like this person. These coffees. I tried the whole sporting events thing. It didn't. Yeah, uh, no. Like she wasn't a big fan of sports. Like a hey, sports. Is that a deal breaker for you? No. Oh. No, 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 no. Definitely not. It's just like sports is my life. Like it's my job. But like you know, what? for a lot of guys, a lot of guys won't actually admit this, but it takes time and experience, and obviously it cooks a certain level of maturity here. Is that actually guys don't really want you to be that into sport? Why? Because it's their time. He just said it. It's their time. It's, it's like, like it's their time. Like you know, like I got like it's like Ben and I play golf, for example, and then like there's I got a mate who play golf with the wives. It's great. Like like I have a girlfriend. I tell her like, don't come. You don't play golf with me. Like that's my that's my four hours yeah. of it's my hobby. Firstly, I'm shit. Don't watch me play golf. Yeah. <laughs> it's embarrassing. I'm still yeah. learning. And it's, but also like I don't want them to know. It doesn't bother me. I just don't sport, but I understand my love for sports. Like I understand that. That's that's the key, right? I understand there. that every weekend for ninety minutes, like either box is gonna make me angry, Chelsea's gonna make me angry, my football. It's like that's all you're gonna. Oh, that's Chelsea. All, that's oh. all I need you to understand. That's if you watch it with me, if you don't. That's fine, but just understand this is what I love, and I'm happy. Yeah, people always say to me like, "Oh, does your girlfriend play golf?" I'm like, no, she doesn't want to because it's my thing. Like, she physically just doesn't want to. She thinks it's a decent enough sport. But yeah. Took us the driving range. She's like, nah, this is your thing. <laughs> Which is good. But, um, you know, going back to this whole thing about picking your first dates, and the reason why I want to bring the story up here is that are we at a point now where it's becoming like kind of transactional and very impersonal? Because, you know, guys are becoming more simpy and they look at lists like that and go, oh, these are the rules of engagement now. It's like, no, they're not. If you like someone <laughs> and you want to do something, you Let, ball your ball. Okay? I, yeah. I, I can tell you now, one. don't follow social media standards because you will not do anything. You will not take a girl out to McDonald's or even just a simple ice cream date because that list told you you can't do that. Now you must go take out a loan just for a girl that you hardly know. You must give her a girlfriend allowance. Don't play according to social media rules. You will lose. It's It's not built for the... Yeah, average joke and I tell you what they won't respect you for that so a while ago back when I was on dating apps this woman said to me 
say women that sound so general. <laughs> um, she said, I only go um, to Paul's or Tash's for breakfast. I'm like, well, she's you're lying. going to go by yourself. <laughs> she's, she's lying. It's. I only do this. It's like. I mean, you see, like, how to spot a liar. Let me like, tell you. When they say, I only, I only go and I. I only shop at Louis Vuitton. You're lying. You shop at other brands. You prefer Louis Vuitton when you have money or once you're making bank. But yeah. there's other shops that you actually go to. So you're lying to me. That's great. Only. I only drink champagne. Lies. You, you drink, drink water. Fruit, yes, <laughs> <your money. laughs> yeah. 100%. Like, yeah. Speaking, speaking of, of booze, you hear that Lewis Hamilton's now bringing an alcohol-free tequila. How does that work? <laughs> <laughs> like that it's basically I, like the, it's I like sound the, so defeated like alcohol free, it's like the, ve- the vegan of booze so in theory I get it right I'm not so, the target market okay so so Lewis he's not I'm not his target market vice versa not my favorite guy I feel he's very like showy and performative all these kind of things he's okay. always on trend with all the issues mm. yet drives for a company that pollutes the world and all these kind of things so Lewis said that you know he's always loved tequila and the taste of tequila but he doesn't like the after effect of being drunk it's a bit weird. It's like, I really like women, but they mustn't talk. Like, yeah. <laughs> this guy is just like, pick, 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 his, pick yeah. his battles here. So he says that there's a growing demand. I mean, this is, again, this is a, a spokesperson. And they say it's Lewis. I know, I write lines for sports people. And the, he said, you know, there's a growing demand for people who like the taste of alcohol, but don't like the effect of it. And I'm calling bullshit. Wait, alcohol you is like the effect. taste of one, alcohol? One, 100%. <laughs> it's, it's, it's but nonsense. you don't... Wait, alcohol is trash. Well, he, The taste he, he of believes, it is trash. He believes the taste of tequila is what's the best thing. It's like, I like the taste of coffee, but I don't drink decaf. I want something out of my yeah. coffee, right? Like, I like the taste of beer, but I think alcohol-free beer... Is the worst thing in the world. It's a bit silly. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Well, I agree with you more. It's the worst thing in the world. It's, <laughs> I mean, like, it, it, there's got to be a level, and it's like the whole Beyond Meat movement that came out. Everyone was like, "Oh, this is so good because you get the taste and it's ethical and all this kind of stuff." It's not. It's you. You eating bullshit. And I think Lewis is going to go on this whole thing, but then it goes in this like balance, like hype equals sales. So I actually spoke to someone who worked in the booze industry yesterday, and she's like, "This is genius. He's going to corner the market." And I looked at her and I said, "Like, yeah, but what's the market?" He's like, "Oh, it's growing huge." It's like, "Yeah, from a base of zero. It's the fastest fastest growing drinks category. Yeah, because it was zero yesterday. (laughs) So there's all this this bullshit hype that gets thrown into this. And Lewis is a big name, okay? So he's going to like guilt. I think that's why it's working. And yes, he's going to make a alcohol-free tequila. So basically, it's coming from the source of where tequila is. But in the distillation process, someone doesn't go to work that day and then it comes out non-alcoholic. But it's like, the thing I don't understand is like you said, it's like alcohol free beer. I mean, I 5% understand it. Like I'm the yeah. I'm the type of, if I don't want to drink, I'm just going to have alcohol. I'm just going to have juice or something. I want to have no alcoholic beer. But like, but tequila is different. Like it's, you buy it for, like I said, probably like the taste, but I mean, like sometimes it's, it's the effect of it. I mean, that's why you tend it's, to. It's the only natural upper in the booze world. Yeah. <laughs> it's like I mean, the, this is. Like it's one of those ones that you're running late, you can have two tequilas and you're just back in the game or. You know, like maybe guys, I can't stay all night. All I'll do is have two tequilas and then I'm going to go home. I'm still the same level, I'm just going to go home. But like now there's, like, I'll be very upset if I, if I get invited to a bra and the tequila shot's going on. You're like, oh, maybe, maybe my tolerance has gotten stronger. And you realize yeah. like, no, there's, there's nothing. Like, no, 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 but no, if no, you guys, don't know, about then... the taste. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. But what I find most insulting about this story is how, is where he's bringing it up. They're about to have the Mexican Grand Prix. Oh, he's <laughs> he is he's basically read the room, sir. Read the room. If this is not like a culture inappropriate, these people are proud Mexican people who love the tequila, <laughs> and here he is going, Oh yeah, guys, I just like the taste. It's just yeah. no booze though. Oh, oh just, this this kind of stuff I just look at and go, sure, we actually do live in pretty good times. If someone can actually make this and someone is gonna then buy this, you've got there's the zero problems in this world, huh? <sighs> I don't know. I don't know. I'm not happy about it, but I'm not the target market. Clearly, I'm not. No, of course you are, because you're a human and you like the taste of things. That's what mm. Lewis Lewis is selling you on the fact that you no. are going to love this. No, no, because what's the point? I can just order passion fruit and lemonade. So, like, there's no difference. So that's that's one way of thinking. But other people will be like, "Oh, I do like I want an alcoholic gin, and so I still want the, the taste of a gin and tonic." No, like, just you know go how, drink. You know how Cape Town you've got to be for an alcoholic free gin and tonic. 
Oh, you have to, you know, like because even though like, Facebook, like, like they always give you that option, like, and they're like, oh, I, no, no, I'll I'm like, well, I'll be no, I no. Want to. <laughs> like, I just, I just, oh, but to. the botanicals are quite similar. Shut up, <laughs> this is this is just too much, you know. I am um, this is alcohol appropriation at its finest, it is, it is, so, like, what. And uh, sorry, I'm I'm really bad at reading the comments, guys. I know people put the things in here, but I'm fixated <laughs> on my guests. I'm not like Gareth. I'm not a good multitasker. <laughs> Parallel parking says that vegans will still be eaten during the zombie apocalypse, true. which is true. Yeah, true. Also good for pregnant women who miss the taste of tequila and don't want the side effects. Now, Rachel, that is a good point. So basically, again, very niche, mm. but I do enjoy your perspective. See, this is the thing. You know, you get all the balanced opinions here. Cook, just getting back to the getting back to the rugby. Um, this entire World Cup, uh, we, we spoke about it earlier because some people were saying like, what's the story with scrums? Why is there all this hoopla? Yes. Do you feel like there's been more moaning in this World Cup than say previous ones? I mean, I know everything gets heightened because of social media and where we are in social media now, whereas we were four years ago, the content creation, the attention spans, yeah. all that kind of stuff. But do you feel like there's been more moaning in this one? People just upset about trivial things? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I think like you said, I think it is due to, because everyone can get in front of a camera and have an opinion and sort of just vent about anything. But I, I, I think it's in a vacuum. I think, like, you look at 2019, there probably was moaning, which is just four years ago. We just we all just moved on from it. But, like, it does seem like from, I mean, the, the beginning was tackle laws. I mean, with, with Tom Curry, obviously, that, that silly record mm, he got. I mean, Tom Curry. He's, he's, I mean, he's come full circle now. Mm. <laughs> and right, then, so, hang a second. What's the Tom Curry thing? Oh, he basically accused uh oh, sorry I, I thought you meant it in like a nice way yeah, no, yeah. no, no that. like so, no okay, i'm not a fan of his <laughs> gotta work out your turn there. Sitting, sitting there sitting there naked talking about Tom Curry. <laughs> so it's like it, it comes for this then it was like then it was like my tmo thing so it's like and rugby it's a game where it's so much is left up interpretation it opens a lot for a bit of yeah a bit of moaning but then it's like in the french basically are still moaning about ben o'keefe well it was quite it was very unfortunate that when the semis came out and Ben O'Keefe ran the field, the French people booed yeah. the ref. They booed the ref from last week. Yeah, it's no, it's, it's absolutely silly. So I, I do think it's, there's been a lot more moaning in general. I think, I think it's, it is due to, I think, the social media getting bigger and bigger and everyone's got a voice, which is great. I think it's great. I always enjoy, when I mean, you go on Twitter or X, sorry, Elon, that in you, the first thing you see most of the time is Rugby World Cup stuff, whether it's yeah. good things, bad things. So that's good. I mean, it's good for the sport and, Unfortunately, World Rugby doesn't want you to share their content, which is the, 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 the yeah, thing that drives me insane. It's because super weird. Huh? There's so much engagement. There's people that are watching, bad, good or bad, there's so much engagement. I mean, like you look at this whole week, how it's been. I'm so glad we actually can talk about the rugby part now of the, of the final. Mm -hmm. But yeah, it's definitely, it does feel like there's a little bit more moaning in general. And like, last rugby, rugby question on this, because I do want to actually, I mean, obviously I could talk to you about sport for a whole three hours we've got to balance it for all these people here saying kids make cunt <laughs> I, have, I have a rugby video for you guys when um, you, but like when you're do, done. do you really think this world cup can really progress to a lot more teams because we know in football now there's what 48 the next world cup yeah, 48 so now they're trying to push to what 20 24 24 it's confirmed yes next one's 24 okay. confirmed yeah. right but like like again we know rugby because it's so close to us. And for us, rugby is like the big games because we're Springbok supporters. So we have five or six teams on our radar. Now to look at world rugby is to say, is a World Cup with that many teams? Jack, do you think it works? Or is that just because we're not exposed to the, the greater thing yet? I don't think it works because you look at world rugby, for example, they're already struggling to deal with the tier two teams they have now. Like, I don't know how to get them games, get them proper planning, get them proper tours. And now they've been shut out because the whole Nations League thing until 2030. So now they want to add four more sides to the World Cup when you can't deal with the like the uh, Japan's, I mean, uh, the Portugal's mm. and uh, Georgia's. They're all struggling to have funds and raising in Uruguay and Namibia. So now you want to add like, they want to add another four teams. I don't think it makes sense because I think 20 is perfect. I think there's a big, I think there's a big fine line. Is you, said, you, you still want to have quality over quantity. Yeah, exactly. Don't delete what you got. It's actually working. Which is like, Super Rugby wins, let's say, maybe Super Rugby was the, was the greatest competition in the world. 12 teams, you play 11 games, semi-finals, final, you play everyone, then they added more teams, added different formats. And you're like, because now, the, I think with the new one, it's, there's going to be a round of 16. So there's going to be eight, that was a qualifier, then uh, I think three or four third base people, Third place, uh, third, third best, third place team. I mean, like, there's four groups, or so three teams can go through. It doesn't make 
Like, See, like, and the thing is, you're good at talking about sport. And the last 10 seconds, I think people actually wanted to die because yeah, it was because so hard to describe. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It it's so That's hard to the describe. World Cup. But like, you make a great point there. It's like Super Rugby, we went down that road. We saw the death of a tournament. We saw the death of like, a rugby spirit in our entire hemisphere. So let's not use that to do it across the world now. I think yeah. that's, that's the big take out here. But it's like, it's, it's, it, it, I, don't, I don't understand how you can have a great product and then you sort of, like, sort of dilute it. I look, sometimes I look at like, you look at the American models, like NFL, for example, is they've got their, they've got their structure. Yeah, you know, they've added a couple of teams here and there, but the product, the system hasn't changed. It's always been, this is yeah. how we play it. This is what guys will go through. Simple as that. They happy you go. Now, well, as we go, great competition, Super Rugby. We'll dilute it, we'll add this. Now, Super is pretty much dead. Well, I mean, besides Australia and New Zealand. But then, like, what happens with the World Cup now? You add more sides and different well, formats. I mean, like, like, like the English, English Premier League, right? There's a very simple to follow promotion and relegation thing. You yeah. know who the big teams are, and it happens at the same time every single year. Yeah. That's how you build actual attention with people, and you build their, their trust and their money. So, I was going to ask you on... Um, you know, obviously, because your your sort of role with how you make content has changed a lot in the last few years, because you're now on these like big sets and you're doing these like kind of big things. What is your sort of let's for example say you know you made a name for yourself with these post match interviews that you did with yourself basically. What's the sort of process that you watch a game and again let's just say you're watching the bot game this weekend and it's going to be tough. Like, is it just you turn a camera on and you just flow, or do you physically actually make some some points and do you actually write some pointers down? Because the way that you go, and what I've always loved about your content is that it's balanced. Like you've got a definite intro, which then has some like jokes intertwined towards a definite conclusion. Like how much of a process do you put into these kind of things? I think I've tried to keep it the same. I mean, um, I, t I think now it's, it's a lot more obviously practice in terms of the key points I will write, write them down, especially if I know what I want to say in terms of, let's say, I want to talk about Oxford scrumming. Then I'm going, okay, cool. This is, that's the main point. Then how can I, then how, what, what questions can I ask about that that it can lead into? But at the end of the day, like it's, I do have notes, but I, what I find funny, I think when, I mean, we, you and know, I have done plenty of videos together is I can't repeat the same thing. Even if I write notes, I can, I can make a joke on the camera and then something just pops into my head. Then that joke is stuck in my head. Then I'm like, okay, cool. And I got to find a way to add this. Yeah, but it's I think now where it's got a lot more structured. I think it's like time. Like I tell myself, okay, I don't want it to be over more than thirty seconds. I don't. Want, if I, I'm I'm gonna only ask two questions. This is the questions I'm gonna ask, and then it's I'm gonna have one joke in one joke in the first question, making sure I finish off this point and it leads to the, the second question. So that's the, the things I'm sort of very harsh about, and because I know once I get the structure, the jokes will flow. That's natural. That's more. That'll come back. I need to make sure it's like which joke to say, when I'm gonna say it, how early, when what's what's the last thing I'm gonna say? What's what's the because um, I try to work on the nuance, the um and like things like that, and like when I'm gonna put put that in. So it is very detailed in that sort, but like the actual material part is that part I don't I don't actually that I freestyle. Actual serious question. But <laughs> because your stuff, your stuff is so funny because post-match interviews are so inane and boring. Is it not maybe a responsibility for Supersport to say, you know what, Cooks, you need to go and actually teach some of these people to talk and actually have something to say? No, because... Has, has that ever come a conversation? Like you go to a sporting, like a team or whatever, you go to these guys and go, look, if you are a man of the match, this is some guidelines here <laughs> because people are actually watching and they don't want to be bored every single time. No, I, I thought about it and I thought, well, if they do do that, then they become then the post match interviews become great, then I don't have a job. So uh, see, you, you gotta you gotta keep <laughs> this the contrast. Is all about you. Yeah. you gotta keep the contrast in the mix. Like you can tell them like just just keep giving us nothing. That's what that's, that's all we want. <laughs> just keep giving us but like there's some I do love. Like I love Sia's post match interviews because it makes me laugh yeah, every time. Great. Because Sia's the type of like, especially in the box news, you even notice it'll be like, Sia, listen, what happened in the fifth minute there? You consider the trying to be like, we did, but our country's as fighters. Like our country is like Sia, but I get it. A <laughs> country's fighting, but like, what happened to the <laughs> You'll never give you like you, you always, especially when you lose. Like they take it back to South Africa. You're like, but right, I've got. But that sounds like politicians. You know, he's le he's, he's learned from the best. To be like, why did you steal the money? Let me tell you about apartheid. Yeah. You know, apartheid <laughs> in 1994, it just put us at a back wheel, 100%. and this is why. Wait, but what happened to them? No, but it's apartheid. You know, but it's like he's slick with it, though. and it, it comes in. So you, so you get distracted. You're like, you know what? Says right, you are a country of fighters. Who cares? They just lost the rugby game. Like you're like, yeah. 
But after a while, you're like, but I've got a podcast on Monday to do. Like, can you just tell me? <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah, this is, yeah. Can it's you give us something? And then we can like move on. Like, then you can go back to the country. Okay, so I have a video for you guys. Um, since you are an expert with like the post game interviews, this is something that um, TikTok has been saying that we as South Africans should do um, just after the haka. You know, this should yes. this sh- this should be the dance. This should be the you dance. All right. Yeah, we bad baby. I'm a box box style. South Africa. This one is for you. Let's go. I see Basabi. She a buffoon. 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 Crazy chicken yeah. mascot. I think we're- <laughs> I'll pay good money, good money to see Franz Van Helper, Eben Etzebeth, Stephen I don't mind like the season. They're fine. It's uh, those are the guys that are. <laughs> they, they went old school with the, Actually, you know. I'll, I'll pay money to see when they're gonna convince them. Like, listen, boys. So World Cup final, Eben boys. This is what we're doing. That's what. That's what I want to see. I think that you know what. Like, I've always had a bit of an issue with the hacker because I know what it's about, and I get culture, and I get all those kind of things. But mm-hmm. it's a bit much. So when you watch the game on Saturday, notice these oaks, okay? Now they've got props. He rocks up oh. with this bat. Oh, really? The All Blacks. So Aaron Smith, the guy that was caught in the in the toilets with a with a with a woman before a tour, uh, which then had this really amazing meme. It's like most people go to the toilets for a number one or a number two, but he ever gone to for a number nine. <laughs> <laughs> he did. He had sexual intercourse with a woman before a tour, and then he got banned. Anyway, side story, side story. But now he rocks up. He's got this bat, and it's a beautiful piece of cultural art okay mm-hmm. then, then they get this little they, they go into a circle mm-hmm. now just bear in mind you've just sung the anthem okay mm-hmm. it's a big moment now you have kickoff the guys are ready to go go just hang on a second we're just gonna have a little huddle here we'll be within a sec they go for a huddle and then they do this whole thing then they come out and then they've got their dance like hang on guys we're just gonna do a dance for like two three minutes tops it won't be that long and then after that they go back into a huddle <laughs> for deep breathing and then like a debrief because it takes like everything in them. Like, have you seen it? They they give it their all. They're like, ah, ah, I mean, ah. I think that's, that's a lot of energy. So they need to. But you can't do. I think the hacker, the biggest thing must change is the fact that you can, you should be able to, I don't mind having it, but you should, you should be able to like come up to it. Especially or, in a final. Yeah. You can decide what you want to do because you can't say, if you're going to make every team have to watch the hacker, which is, it's a big part of rugby, but then you must, you can't tell teams how to react to it. So if you want to turn your back to it, or if you want to walk up to it, or you want to be like face to face, like the 95 one, like you should be able to have that option if we have to watch, if you have to stand for two minutes basically and watch them perform a haka. So you they know, could just close their eyes. So you, you know, when, when the Irish faced the haka, they made a figure of eight. Yeah. It was in memory of a guy who played number eight. What I would like for the box is just literally have the outline of a cock and balls. <laughs> so we literally have like the, the the back line splits out into the balls and then the forwards go for like this long sort of shaft thing. And then Eben's right at the front just staring at Aaron Smith going, yeah, what? That would be a beautiful drone shot. It really would be because you've got the all blacks and then you've got this like green cock and balls. I mean, you, you know, we're going with this. It would be, be, be quite a girthy thing because there's only 23 guys that can do yeah. it. Right. That's not the first. Evans at the tip, and Evans at the tip. <laughs> <laughs> just drop his rods, even. I mean, let's just because if you the, 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 again, I'm all into like stupid rules, and I'm not like obviously pouring water over people who have tradition that kind of stuff. I get it, but it's just been taken too far. And it's a very one sided. If you get into a rugby world cup final against the All Blacks, you should have free have carte blanche do what you want. 100%. And people always say, "Oh, don't poke the bears." Like whatever. You know, there was a time in the, I think it was in the nineties. Um, Australia played against the All Blacks and they were done with the stupid hacker thing. So they just got into a huddle and they just literally they had their own little team talk while they did everything. Yeah. And they lost. Like, geez, they took a beating that day. Was the, I remember the one time Wales as they tried to be aggressive. So the All Blacks did the hacker 
and it obviously ended and Wales didn't move. So they like, they, they like a stare down for like three minutes. It's like Wales is like, you know, we're not going to turn back to you. you know, stay you down. Ref was actually trying to get the game going. And then yeah, Wales lost by 50. But, wow, <laughs> but you see, that's what we need. Hard, that's, yeah. I, I, I say the intention that's, was good. That, I, I say that's what we need since they can't do anything. Like it's either you close your eyes because that's disrespectful as fudge. If you're doing something and no one's watching, um, it's either they laugh. So they have to like fake this laugh somewhere like get the tickles going or just like do a stare off like okay cool what else because they've, they've also seen this thing 500 times yeah, what else especially it's, it's one thing oh they changed it must, it must be only be in new zealand imagine i come to your house be like paying for what's the rugby i need to do my my traditional yeah. routine like just wait just watch me don't do anything don't don't leave don't make any, a noise don't but make you a must noise. watch as well yeah like i know it's at your house but do you have this is what i do for every game like doesn't make sense like you should be able to like okay i want to go make coffee while mm. you do you do your it's just, it's another moment where the guys see it so often as well now. So it's not like it's a challenge. It's like, it's a dance, guys. It's a performative dance. I think New Zealanders, have, I've said this many, many times in the show, the New Zealanders take it far too far. Like you go there, they'll do a hucker as like a welcome. It's like, do you want to fight or are you saying hello? I mean, you mixed messages here because you're taking it too far. You get an Aiden Matrick hucker. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, it's like you, you, you just retired long service award. The kids give you a hucker. It's like, guys, just, just, just chill out a bit. It's your wedding hacker. Everything you need, like run to your best man speeches then. No. Like, okay, hacker. Hacker. like okay, hacker. Cool. there's gonna be a tongue coming out. <laughs> Imagine <laughs> Close your eyes is too much. So Chris, what do you what do you reckon? I know everyone's been talking about the fact that it's gonna be a tight game, it's in the wet, and you're gonna think it's gonna be a slug fest, but what what are you backing? I don't I think it'll be obviously I mean it is wet, but I mean like it rains all the time in New Zealand and for some reason those guys don't seem to drop a ball even Hot or, hot or they got different they got webbed hands no 100 so i think I, I just can't see springbok an all black game being like six six nine nine and sort of i think there will be points i think it'll, it'll be around about like 20 like 22 20 i think there'll be there'll be about there'll, there'll all be try scored i think it's such it's such interesting because the all blacks will i think they'll kick a lot more but they back them skills it doesn't matter which which conditions and I think the Springboks going 7-1 is absolutely massive. I love it. It's the best. I like, love it so much. It's just the most Springbok thing to do. So, again, like the whole 7-1 thing is that when your game is so tight, you have replacements in the big guys. And that's what they've gone for here. And it's really cool because if you were like Sean Klein, um, Trevor Nyakane, Jasper Visa, maybe there was a chance that you wouldn't be playing mm. because the packing is so hard. And Vili is the only backline replacement. Mostly because he's just also there to shout at people if they win. Yeah. <laughs> like you see it in an in, in yeah. England match. And then they wanted to wrap from, him up. Came all the way from Strand to come in to come shout at people. <laughs> but like, it's one of those things. I think it's one of, like I said, if like win or lose, the park coaches won't regret. Because they'll be like, listen, we've thrown all our chips now. If they went like 5-3 and then they lost for some, they're going to, man, what if you went like, I wanted to go 6-2 or 7. Now they're going, we've thrown our cards in the end. This yeah. is how we are beat us in the all blacks i'm glad the all blacks also didn't go like six two they went this this is our cards we five three yeah. so because if the all blacks lose playing six two you'd be like oh why do you change for a final so yeah, absolutely but i think what it comes down to is that like no matter what the result is we started the show by basically saying like the box have been the greatest thing for us and we should say thank you to them if you ever see them you know, in street, thank you for your service. Because these guys have given us so much. They really have. And especially the backline players who play all 80 minutes. <laughs> like, you think you see these folks are doing, like, so much. And they are doing so much in the yeah. front. But, like, our centers, they have played every single match, basically. And they're going to be instrumental again this weekend. So those are my big heroes. Damien DeAllende, Jesse Creel, those are the big players. And obviously, Ibn and the rest. But if we go cock balls formation, I don't think we're going to lose from here. No, I like it's that. just an idea. Okay. Tell you what's also just an idea. If you marry someone... Okay. Mm -hmm. And obviously she takes your name. You're going to have the same last name, right? Mm -hmm. Easy to follow. Mm -hmm. What if you both have the same first name? So, you, see, you see the, the problem so if here. I yeah. me, so I'm Simpue and I meet a guy called Simpue. Yes. So Simpue, I don't know. Uh, what is Simpue Benjamin. Right? Yes. Okay. And then I'm Simpue Mteta. And then you take my last name. So I become Simpue. That's dope. See, but then we're the same that's person. So yeah. But you're the same person. So it's an act. No, no, that's so dumb. Let me tell you. Let me tell you why I think. I love that... the fact that you think this is great. I think this is an them. Like, I'm <laughs> actually like, dear blue thing out there somewhere. I think this is a great, like, story. I, I want the story now for my life, right? <laughs> I really, really do. Like, I want this to be. Oh my gosh, imagine. Like, I get married. Some period. Like, ah! 
A, like if you've ever watched like rom-coms, you know, there's this fairy tale at the end and this is it. Like you are the half that I've been missing, literally, like not just in one aspect, like in terms of my name, in terms of how we interact, like this is a relationship that has become one. You just don't in- go to home affairs, do you? <laughs> it's, it's like you're living a Spice Girls like, like she story. Just, you don't want to go to Home Affairs and change your surname because like, like, oh, you know what? Oh, it's the same thing, so it's like, fine. Like, I'm just saying, like, this has... I'm... I'm, the, Like, we have become one in every aspect, even our names. But it's, even our names have become one. So the reason I bring it up is that, that Taylor Lautner, who was... I think he was a badger in the Twilight movie, whatever the fuck he was. <laughs> he married a woman called Taylor who took his last name of Lawton. Love it. So now the two of them, like when they go through airport control or whatever, it looks weird because they've got the same like name on the passport and they've traveled together. Okay. So you kind of go, yeah, okay, cool. We'll get through that because it's just quite possible. But then what happens when they start doing like Amazon deliveries? They get you the must same put name. Mr. or Mrs. I love I think I'm 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 living in the Delulia, okay? Like this is it. This is the ultimate fairy tale dream come to life. I am... you can I'll, I'll hyphenate like you keep your surname, but then you or keep your surname and then you add mine at the end just for the admin uh, for... But they all got they've gone all in, so they've yeah. got identical names. Like do you put in like a, a initial in the middle? <laughs> like am I Taylor Z Nort Nortner? Maybe I don't know. I, I I just live for it. I'm I'm here for this uh, fairy tale thing. That's it doesn't make sense, but it makes sense for me and my <laughs> man. And like we have become Mister and Mrs. And um, you know, like my name is yours, your name is mine. Like imagine, <laughs> that is so cute. No, I think it's cute. I, I, I just love how our minds are so different. <laughs> yeah. uh, I think you, it's so cute. Like I I'm living for this. It's a fairy tale come to like forget. Marrying a prince, forget that. Forget marry a billionaire. No, I get to marry the guy with the same name as me. What yeah, are the odds? Tough day to be a prince or a billionaire. I mean, look. What are the odds? There's eight billion people out there in the world, and I met you. I mean, if nothing else, it's written in the stars. Nothing else. It's a great icebreaker when you eventually get to the stage of swinging. <laughs> <laughs> so we've got we've got George on the line. George is obviously with hey. us. Hi there. How's it going? All right, new bling. Nice and pure. I think. Oh, that, uh, <laughs> George. Okay. We've all worn green today. Yes. George, uh-huh. this is, hey, George. George, this is George. Hey, how's it? Yeah, great. We're all here. So, George, today we're going to do something a little bit different. Um, one of one of my sort of like, I don't know, I think every guy has gone through this at some stage where they've gone through Auto Trader and like, oh, I'd love to see what this car, if I could get this. You know, when you're a kid, you think like, I want to buy this when I'm an adult and stuff. And eventually you become an adult and you look at these cars and go, maybe that's not that expensive if I'm going to have like a double, double on something. So I, George, I had this idea of like, what does 200,000 Rand actually get you? It's a good question. Well, you know, it's, it's, it's a good question. And since, since you asked me that question, the, um, and, and, and I've been kind of dipping my toe in in seeing what I would get for 200,000 Rand. And there's actually quite a lot. I noticed there were over 18,000 vehicles available under 200,000 Rand. Amazing. Okay. Jeez. So um, we have this little game. So Piwi, you've chosen a car that you think that you would want for 200,000 Rand. Yes, I um, you know, the criteria is quite simple. It's just the car that you would get for that. We're not looking to be the most frugal. We're not looking to basically get the most sensible car because you can buy a what a decent toyota corolla okay okay i mean if you were going to play a safe hey george the, to, like a yeah. toyota corolla at this price point would probably be a good car um yeah so let's let, let's start with you george what would you yes. get for this price point so um i you know it's probably a little known fact that uh, i am a jeep wrangler absolute nut i love jeep wrangler a lot of oh, people wow. would be Ooh. like um, so, uh, so that was my choice, Jeep Wrangler. That's nice. Hey? So, oh. what, ninety-eight thousand on the clock? Oh, that's and I've done a bit of work to that, huh? Oh, yeah. that's lavish, yeah. though. So, so I, 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 I kind of like this military look vehicle. I've always liked them. Um, so yeah. the Hummer, the Jeep, um, and and Jeep squarely fits into that price bracket. Absolutely, two thousand and five model. It's a petrol. Ooh. Looks being pretty decent, Nick. Yeah, that's nice. And George, that that roof thing there, that's detachable, right? Yeah. So so the thing about a Jeep, a Wrangler, is 
all of the body panels come off. I don't think the fenders come off, but uh, all of the body panels come off. You can take the doors off. You can take the windscreen folds down forward. Um, it's proper, you know, American military vehicle. Amazing. Lavish. So, Bira, what have we got for you? Okay, so before I tell you what my vehicle is, because you got me thinking, and I was like, hmm, my dream car at this particular point would be one that, you know, doesn't lose value over time. You know, and that's very hard because as soon as you drive it out the 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 showroom, it's it's gone. It's just gone shikukukuku. But mine doesn't. In fact, I can tell you, you don't need to worry about uh potholes, don't need to worry about traffic. In fact, you also don't need to worry about parking because this oh, is a ugly. mean yeah. <laughs> machine, okay? You really, really don't. Um, it's it makes sense because I'm Zulu, you know, and a lot of Zulu people drive this car. And I'm just trying to build an empire with it as well. I can make money with it. So I was like, boom, shaka boom. This is great. And last but not least, this is a poor man's, you know, uh, limousine. It's the one and only a beautiful quantum, guys. Like this, <laughs> you this are gonna has buy a to quantum. Be, I'm going to buy a quantum, guys. <laughs> it's, not, it's not even a quantum. What is this oh, thing man. even called? It's, it's, it's a quantum, guys. That's a quantum from Wish. It's yeah. A, yeah, it's a quantum shape. It's not, it's not a... <laughs> let me tell let me tell you guys. You know, we live in South A, and this this guys is one of the only vehicles in South A that doesn't pay attention to, you know, uh the rules of the road. You know, I, I don't have to, this you know, worry. Pick. Wait, I don't have to worry about um it being roadworthy because hey. It's a, it's a taxi. It's not even a badge on the steering. Thank you. It's so fitting, right? It's so fitting. Uh, you can fit 16 baddies in here. You know, they do four for Mastali Sane. They pass the money over. I can start, yeah, you know, being... Much. Yeah, but I'm going to start my taxi empire business with that 200K. It is called the 5015BAW <laughs> says. Hey. Don't worry about Sasuka. the name and the specs. Let me tell you, this thing is going to move. It can take you to Devon and back easily in one trip. You know, sure. I don't need to worry about servicing it. Who services so a taxi? I, I've, got to, I've, I've got to bring this back. <laughs> this this back is my dream car. And they're the most, like, feared people on the road. They run the shots in Sat A. Why would I not want this car? Okay, so I was given this task, <laughs> and for 200,000 Rand, I have found what I think is a, is a pretty good car here a 2011 BMW 640i convertible. Look at that for Ooh. that money. See, Ooh, so this that's is nice. it's okay. a nice convertible, it doesn't have huge amounts of mileage in the clock. It's 2011, but okay. look how cool this car looks. Look at the interior. It's, it's cool. I mean, that's plush, yeah. yeah? It's okay. I mean, Doesn't keep mine. I used, to, I, used to, I used to have a 650, a six series like that, the 650. Not the not the uh, uh, convertible though, and it was an amazing car. Obviously, the people in the back mustn't have legs, but that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> but what an absolute what an absolute dream of a car, and, the, and that will age pretty well. Look at that, eh? It's just a beautiful. Oh. Uh, I mean, I would drive anywhere in that. So, George, I've got to ask a question here. Okay, so like. What's the red flag for that kind of car? Okay, so it's got like 130,000 on the clock. It's a mm. performance car. Mm. Um, you know, it looks too good to be true. 200,000 Rand, you can get pretty much nothing new for that. What are the kind of the red flags to look out for in something like that? Um, so a car like that is is is, is high powered. So I mean, it's a four liter four liter engine. Um, I'd be I'd be looking for you know whether the whether the whether the engine's been serviced um uh it's a heavy engine so what is the suspension uh, like so i would i would be taking that mm. car to some to a place like decra uh getting a multi point check making sure i take so 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 one thing people don't do when they buy cars is they don't take a um a sample of oil you can take a sample of oil to a place called wear check oh wow um wear check is here near to Benoni Kempton Park, there's a there's a wear check within the industrial area. And uh and wear check um um analyzes microscopically the oil and whether there are metal particles in the oil. Um oh. if there are metal particles in the oil, um it means that the the pistons are obviously rubbing against something something's scratching there's something going wrong in the in the crankshaft or in the bearings um, and you can tell quite a lot by this analysis of, uh, of of a sample of oil of the car and would that be quite a common thing though i mean do you look at that and go 
I know what's going to happen with the oil here, or is it just because of poor wear and tear, you get some cars are going to be duds? Yeah, so, you know, when the car's not being looked after, not being serviced, oil's not being changed regularly, um, you get you get higher levels of wear. So, I mean, obviously the piston is is rubbing against the, um, the sleeve, it's metal on metal, um, and uh, you want that wear to be as light as possible. And the only way that that, that happens in, on a car that age is if it's regularly serviced, oil is regularly changed, filters regularly changed to remove the harsh particles from the, from the moving parts. Because remember, the moving parts are moving inside um, a body of oil. Um, and the higher the quality of that oil over the life of the car, the less the car's engine is going to wear. So basically, if your car is simply wear, when they take a, a sample, it's just going to come like cream soda is going to come out of that thing. It's not You're even stressing oil. You're about the that, wrong things, Ben. People are putting soft this drinks in that thing. This car doesn't do that. This, this car is the one that even if there was a shootout right now, it's back on the road tomorrow. <laughs> it's it's back on the road. Horrifying choice <laughs> I've ever seen come across. Another, another, another trick that, uh, that people don't... Um, uh, I don't know if, if 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 many people know, but if you take the water, you know the water um, reservoir cap. Mm -hmm. If you open the water reservoir cap on a car and you look on the inside, sometimes there is this frothy substance on the inside. Okay, um, and when there's a frothy substance on the inside, or there's a, a, a frothy substance on the on the on the surface of the water inside that reservoir, that means that oil is pushing past the rings, and uh, and into the engine. Uh, sorry, into the into the water system somewhere. Uh, not past the ring, sorry, uh, uh, through the block into the water somewhere. That means you've got a, either a gasket leak, or uh, uh, because oil's not supposed to be present in the water. Um, so there's little things that you can do on a car that age that uh, that you don't need to do on a on a newer car. All right. So I think ah, I got a question. Yes. Um, one please thing on, I did on about your car. I, it is it is about my car. It's about my beautiful <laughs> quantum that's going to make me millions, right? <laughs> is I did notice on like the seller's comment, it was like uh, sold as is. So <laughs> <laughs> that's why I thought your car couldn't get any better. <laughs> <laughs> understand what does that truly truly mean you know <laughs> it means run away <laughs> that's that's, so that's that all i need to know mm -hmm. your it's, quantum is it. good oh that's it so when you get is, in there, so but is that a good deal though like if if they're selling it as is or like should i be scared? that's the only thing i'm worried about out of everything that i saw that was the only thing i was worried about Sophia, right now george is actually ashamed <laughs> that that car is on auto trader <laughs> so i think the more you talk about it the more you make no, you feel all I'm saying, i mean i'm being very business orientated i'm going to spend what 190k with some change you know um and make what a couple of millions and take over south africa come on that's a good deal <laughs> you, you, you know what the, you know what the thing is with, with an advert. Um, mm -hmm. As long as the seller is transparent, and if he's saying selling it as is, mm -hmm. then you know that's transparency. Then uh, you know, take your quantum and and uh, and 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 run. Oh. <laughs> okay, but what he's saying is is actually just run. Just don't even go towards that thing, which yeah. isn't actually a quantum. George, what are your plans for rugby this weekend? Um, uh, to to watch it in a um, um, in a non uh, non crowded environment. I think I might just watch it at home because uh, I think yeah. people are going to get quite rowdy. Yeah, and is it, these these late games are very rowdy inducive. Here, yeah? I mean, by the time we end up high fiving, it's one in the morning on on Sunday. Exactly, totally and then, worth you know, it. You know, drunk people falling all over the floor and vomiting, and yeah. Well, yeah, well, we all too much. Worse, then it might be clear. Yeah. <laughs> See, that's that's why I'm watching it at my golf club because I'm hoping for an air of sophistication. Oh. Cooks, oh. Cooks, oh. you're gonna be working, oh. yeah. So, yeah, you, I'm working. Where are you gonna actually physically watch the game? I know you said you're gonna uh, do stuff. We'll, be, we'll be at Mainland Boy, so watching it live there with with all the hundreds, thousands okay. of people there. It's gonna be crazy. Long day. All righty, our time is up for the show. This time has flown by. Um, George, thanks for joining us. Hope you have a great time watching a chilled experience. Cooks, thanks for coming through. Thanks thanks for having you. Obviously, meet some Piwe <laughs> and some Piwe. Thank you, but please just don't ever just throw that piece of paper away. No, if I guys, I'm being such a South African, right? You've seen those car everywhere, okay? And you all respect it when it wants to drop inside the lane. What do you do? You just let it in.
and love. I'm, cl- I'm playing you out. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Gareth will be back next Friday. It's been great having you. Go, Booker. <laughs>